Oh, hi. Hello. Cinematica. Hi. It's Cinematic Universe. Hi. With Erica Ishii. Augustine Rios. Adam Hlavak. The applause light is on. And Hector Navarro. <laughs> Musical guest, a switchboard. <laughs> <laughs> and your host. Featuring Lucas Fe- Eubank. Lucas Eubank. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Yeah. We are at my place in sunny Santa Monica. Uh, sunny yeah. Santa Monica at night. Yeah, at, in the evening. It feels good in here. Super, super sunny because it's super moon, y'all. Oh, that's oh, right. Yeah. Super moon is bright. Yeah. Super, super sunny. sunny moon. So this is going to be our temporary home until Hyper RPG South can get up and running. Yeah. So welcome, everybody. Yeah. Thanks for having uh, us. It, oh, I'm so glad you all could make it. Thank you for driving out here. You gave us beer and cookies? That's fantastic. <laughs> Those are, that's, that's, <laughs> oh, yes, okay. yes. Oh, J-Lo, hey, cool. Thanks for the resub. JLow81, subscribe two months in a row. Thank you so much for resubbing. Welcome to the stream. Guys, I can't wait for the show to go down in five minutes. <laughs> I know, right? Wait, no, we're not in your won't. apartment anymore, yeah. so it's not gonna okay. happen here. We've we'll got we'll see how it goes. Verizon Fios here. Next yeah. episode in the ball pit, maybe. Maybe that'd maybe. be fun. We should I, before the before for our last episode, we, maybe we should watch a movie in the ball pit. That'd be pretty oh. good. Really. That'd be pretty good. Mm. Mm. Be real uh, if Lucas is willing to w- do this setup. WDM twelve sixty two is asking, should we be drinking with you if you can? Sure. Oh, sure. Yeah, sure. welcome and have a beer with you us. If you're of age, if you're of age, and if you're not. Grab a Pepsi. Yes. Mm-hmm. Or a Sprite. <laughs> or water. <laughs> or a root beer. <laughs> or Shirley Temple. Sure. Sure. Or, or an energy drink. Bobby McShank will be subscribed <laughs> for nine months in a row. What was that? <laughs> nine Bobby. Months. <laughs> nine months. Chances. Chances. Well, happy, happy yeah. two months. Happy two months. Happy two months. Ooh, chances is like, should be working. Ooh. No, we got movies <laughs> no. to talk about. <laughs> That's Just right. Yeah, stop to do. We got an bit. exciting night tonight. There's actually quite a lot of really interesting news. Two weeks yeah. of shit to catch up on, you guys. Yeah. 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 Plus, I mean, we didn't talk about Doctor Strange oh last no, week. No, no. No, that's true. I didn't even yeah. think about that. Yeah. Holy yeah. moly, moly. There's a lot of stuff to cover, so cover any house clean, housekeeping we need to do, Adam. Okay. Uh, and then we'll just roll right into it. Well, yeah. he's pulling that up. We need to thank you guys for subscribing, for mm-hmm. your donations, for your bits, for, for contributing to the channel, because without you, this channel would not exist. If you guys weren't aware, this is how the channel works. Thanks it's how it's follow. run on. Thank you so much for following. So we appreciate every single little bit of effort and donation and love that you guys send our way. So yeah. thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. And because of you guys, we're going to be able to get a new studio very, 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 very soon. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, Within gonna, a month. Exactly. We're going to be moving to a new place. It's going to be all decked out. Hyper South will be up and running. And uh, the hope is to continue the show, obviously, but also do a, a whole lot of other stuff. So Definitely. we're all very, Definitely. very excited. We can't thank you guys enough. Obviously, all of this is happening because of you, because you guys subscribe. Uh, if you guys have if you guys have Amazon Prime and you have a Twitch account, obviously, link those together. You'll get a free month uh, uh, subscription. You can use it towards Hyper RPG. There's so much That's so content. Cool. Start saying thank, Start you, saying for thank you so bits. much for them bits. Thanks for them bits. Claire's in the chat, y'all. So Claire <laughs> is in, in the, the chat. chat. Oh, my God. oh, oh shit. Bah, bah, bah. She was just on Twitter bah, talking bah, bah. about she was just on Twitter talking about how horny the beast makes her, just how hot he is. Oh my god. No, no, no. She was, she was saying super that. horny. Oh, oh hey, Vessiot. Vessiot, welcome. Thank you. Thank so you, much you very for much for coming. Welcome. And we're right there with you, Claire. God Vessiot damn it. Vessiot is actually the one who got us the bear. So uh, next week when I when I bring him back from the studio, it's gonna be Cinnaverse <laughs> and a bear. And a bear? Oh, Wait, we saw a bear. Yeah. 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 Definitely. That definitely. puts the tingles in my jingle. Play for uh, it's like, uh, wow. Yeah, put your shit on blast. Five months. Thank yeah. you for the resub. Yeah. Five months in a row, baby. <laughs> oh, uh, is, that, is that all the... Is Ooh. All yeah, I mean, I'm going to go through it. We're going to go through it uh, as we go along. But obviously, you know, one of the things that you get as a as a subscriber to Hyper is you get access real, to the Discord. Real quick, what? guys. Grabad says, Grabad says, first time watching the show, been watching everything, has only discovered the channel last week. Just oh. curious as to why another studio was Ace needed. Ace and this couldn't be done in the same studio. Well. We're, we're in Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Hyper RPG is up in Seattle. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. Seattle. Which is why we're referring um, to this as Hyper South. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a work in progress, yeah, but remote very, very soon we're going to be building, uh, you know, a new studio that's going to house more content and a whole bunch of other stuff. So it's very exciting times for Hyper RPG right now. Thanks for watching. And yeah. again, like we were saying before, it's because of you guys, because you guys support the channel. Everything that you guys do directly funds and supports everything that they're trying to do here. So yeah, and, thank and you so much. Thank you to all of you who've been sticking with us for yeah. for these, despite the fact that we've had technical <laughs> issues and yeah. you know, like things have gone down, but you're all there and, and it means a lot to us. 
Yeah, I'm glad people are actually watching the show still because uh, <laughs> honestly, that was pretty rough for the last couple of days. So rough. thank you. Thank yeah, you it, uh, the first four episodes we should have just dubbed it the shit show that? because that's what it was. It was. It was. Hey, a shit show. <laughs> I got a I got a message from Zach here. Uh -oh. Oh, oh, what do we got? That's never oh, good. Oh, Lucas play it. Play it. Lucas play it. Play it now. Yo, Lucas is looking at some dope ass houses down there all week long. We're gonna get you set up in Hype Out PG South in no time. Woo! That was a mo. Oh, I love it. That was yeah. the most thug Hooray. I've ever heard Zach sound. That was, yeah. the, that was the I'm going to get you hooked up in Hyper South, baby. That was the happiest he was, uh, I've heard him so sound in a long time. Yeah. excited. That, yeah. that wasn't Zach, was it? Yeah. That was totally not yeah. Zach. Yeah, man, Someone gosh. Yeah. Uh, we didn't get so. a review of Doctor Strange. No, we're going to we're gonna talk about tonight. Yeah. We're going to hit yeah. that. Yeah. We're going to talk about that. that. Yeah. We're also going to watch two trailers that we didn't get to watch last week that I'm sure Erica has not seen. And Which ones? Wonder Woman <gasps> and Lego Batman. Oh no, I I'm so Lego excited. Batman See, I don't watch wow. trailers so when I'm not with it's you guys, good. so it's we good. can save my reactions for all of you. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, one, if we if we if we uh reach five hundred in donations on this episode, we're gonna give away the official yeah. Cineverse t shirt. Uh, we'll ship that anywhere around the world. Thanks you can't get it on oh, Thank you very much. Thank you, Zen Blade. Bits, thank you thank so you. much. Wow. Um the shirt is available on Amazon in the United States. But we try to push this giveaway every single episode. That way we can give it a shirt away to anybody around the mm -hmm, world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So beautiful. Love yeah. it. It's a beautiful thing. It is. Shall we? Thing. Let's uh, get into it. I got one more announcement. I got one more announcement, guys. Uh, if we can get to 10 subscribers in this show, we're going to give away a copy of Watch Dogs 2. Oh! oh. No. That's Watch My Dogs. notes don't have that, so I Pretty skipped cool. it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank I don't you, have Lucas. that note either because I'm just looking at my article. Yeah, my article, which I will begin to talk about right now. Is that, are, we, are we in the news, the news time? Are we good to go news? news? Yeah. Okay. News time. All right. So we are talking Green Hornet. So I don't know. I, I want to talk about this because all three of us got to work on this movie <gasps> back in the, the day. Yeah. Yeah. 2011. Thank you very much. Yeah. What, what year was that, Hector? 2011. It was you released. Were, you yeah. were my supervisor that's at that so point. weird. Yeah. Wow! And uh, so at the bottom now you're here. So that's where I got to meet Adam. I got to well, I already knew Hector Thanks for a for while, reason. and uh, we were working at our first. Thank you, Zero uh, At our first big Hollywood production <laughs> place I in guess. San Diego. In San Diego, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was, so I have a kind of a special connection to this mm. previous movie, at least. Yeah. Uh, but now it's been announced that they are making a complete like a reboot reimagining everything's being restarted uh with green hornet and this was interesting to me because the first one wasn't really a commercial or a critical success <laughs> whatsoever no uh which some teams seems to follow the trend with seth rogan films uh they, he just kind of does Wait, stuff out of passion ha project. hang on hang on yeah. a minute uh, to, to defend seth rogan no, for a second he, yeah what? uh well critically you might be right but it's like that's also <laughs> comedies <laughs> yeah, he's been this, in some i think this is the end actually did comedies. really well critically critically uh, yeah good point and i think so did like so did knocked up did maybe well, yeah. i think judd apatow comedies always do pretty well but I I I, the, I, re I was reading about it, and Seth Rogen has learned not to make as big a budget movies yeah. after Green Hornet. I think that he One, makes ah, so this good. Is a learning yes, experience I think he makes him. good comedies, but mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. you know, you can't really mess I mean, with stuff that like this. That was the problem to begin with. People were really skeptical that he was doing was such a big part of an action blockbuster. Right. right. So yeah. I, he's I just not that guy. He's, yeah, he's not the guy. And so now we have Gavin O'Connor. Uh, who directed The Accountant, which is uh, getting pretty good. From what I hear, it's yeah. pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, Hector, you saw it, right? It's a fun time. It's, it's pretty wackadoo, time. but it's a fun time. Do you think this director will do well with this franchise? I think he's a great director, but I don't know. Remains to be seen. Remains to be seen. Okay. W which okay. we can kind of talk about. I have my own little opinions about what he sort of said, but what what was like? What's kind of like the news coming out? And what, why did why does Ga Gavin O'Connor care about this? Uh, Gavin O'Connor. Well, he's working with Sean O'Keefe. Uh, apparently they have a brand new reimagining when they don't there's no details on exactly what's going to happen in this mm -hmm. new story it's just they're excited about what they're doing with these two characters mm -hmm. i'm hoping that it's something to get me interested in this franchise because i'm not really interested in watching this whatsoever yeah what about you, oh I, I mean kato is like a childhood icon you know he, I, he was I never heard one of, of him. the oh mm -hmm. man kato was like one of the few asians on tv and bruce lee at bruce that. lee got to play so him. i yeah. mean Come on. And, and honestly i i think we we've had this discussion before that uh kato needs to be the lead character for it to not be mm -hmm. Mm -hmm weird and problematic mm -hmm. um, because also when when you think about it like everybody remembers that Bruce Lee was Kato if they remember 
Green Hornet at all. Right. But who remembers who Green Hornet was? I don't, right. <laughs> That's it's why. It's just mostly forgettable. I don't... I, Kano was the man that is correct, C-Spider. Well, yeah, Andy. of course. If it's Bruce Lee, anything that Bruce Lee did, it was yeah. great. And he was but, like, it was like his major, his first major American role. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was a breakout role for him and people really were like, who's this? Who's playing? Who's, who's this, this Kato guy? guy? Yeah. Who's this Kato guy? And then Bruce Lee became a sort of household name. And yeah. when it was marketed and, and sold in China and in, in Asian markets, it was called Kato and the Green Hornet. Yeah. Which is yeah. really, really funny. So the thing that I, I'm like 50-50 with this news because I liked The Accountant. I haven't seen Warrior yet, but I know it's an awesome film. Uh, Warrior O'Connor. was the boxer. Yes. Movie. I, saw, I saw that the UFC. one. The UFC it was guys. really good. Like the... The story was okay, but it was right. really well executed. Well executed. And a very good, very good dynamic between yes. the two guys, which is a very important That's actually, that's, I'm glad you brought that up, Erica. That gives me hope. Because the thing I'm really excited about is that Gav, uh, Gavin O'Connor, Gavin O'Connor has yeah. said he's been following the rights to Green Hornet as they kind of run around Hollywood. Yeah. Because he, this is one of his favorite properties ever. And you that want, growing you up, he, he loved. Said in the article? Please, yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So he says in the article that uh, that we have here, it says, uh, "This is Gavin O'Connor. I've been waiting to remake this movie. Uh, I'm sorry. Let me start over. I've been waiting to make this movie and to create this franchise. So that's interesting. It's going to be a franchise. Uh, since I wanted to make movies as a kid, when most of my friends were into Superman and Batman, there was only one superhero who held my interest: the Green Hornet." I always thought of I, I always thought he was the baddest baddest badass because he had no superpowers. The Green Hornet was a human superhero, and he didn't wear a clown costume, and he was a criminal in the eyes of the law, and in the eyes of the criminal world. So all of this felt real to me. Imagine climbing to the top of the Himalayas or Mount Everest or K2 over and over again, and no one ever knew. You can never tell anybody, and that's the life of Brit and Cato. What they do can they can never say, and they don't take credit for anything. Yeah, uh, yeah absolutely. Uh, you know, Hector and I did a TV fights a little while back where mm-hmm. we had to pitch a, a reboot of an unsuccessful like what movie uh, deserves movie a reboot as yeah. a TV show, <laughs> right. and he slipped in with Green Hornet before I got the chance to, <laughs> even though I pitched it as well, <laughs> uh, and he argued it really competently, and and he deserved to win that round because I I think it did can I be win? Done. Who won? Did I win? You won. Oh, you won okay, that cool. one because <laughs> because again they were just rubbing it in. As a, as a TV in. as a TV show, it makes sense because it doesn't require a lot of special effects. Right, and, you know, it's a, it's a story that can right, right. really resonate still. But I still think it could be a, a, a great movie. I would prefer it as a TV show, I think. But yeah. but I'm I'm still hopeful for it. Uh, what, it. What network would you like to see that TV show on? Oh gosh, uh, you know, I really only watch uh, streaming stuff mm-hmm. these days, like HBO and Netflix. Mm-hmm. And Netflix would be it'd just be great on Netflix. The too. worry yeah. is that if it were like a TV show, it would fall into like the CW category of superhero TV, which would yeah. be really cheesy and really TV. you know full of attractive people and yeah. stuff like that. The the problem with what I had with Ga- what Gavin O'Connor said is that he's really really focusing on Britt Reed, the Green Hornet, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and barely mentions Cato one time. So my issue is that he's trying to move away from the campiness of the movie that we worked on, Augustine, the movie, right, that we worked, right. which is like fair because I don't think the Green Hornet should be all the way campy. It should be fun uh, and have char- two like male characters that are like a bromance, like mm-hmm. 21 Jump Street or mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah. But it shouldn't be super, super serious and super dark, but it shouldn't be like, let's make fun of it like the way the movie did because you have a, a, a you do have a legacy to honor. My problem is that he's focusing on making Britt Reed realistic. He's focusing on making him like a a CIA, like, you know, at the like top. Like James Bondy? Like a right. James Bond thing. He's really focusing on like, oh, I love the Green Hornet. I love the Green Hornet. I love the Green Hornet. I'm like, dude, what about Kato? If I you know. don't make it a partnership, it could fall back into the category of Kato's a sidekick. Kato is, this is probably not going to happen, but the modern day manservant, Asian manservant, is just going to turn into uh, a sidekick, sidekick and like a lesser and known. And it's character. true, like like for Bru- the Bruce Lee series, he was even though they started out making him kind of the manservant sidekick, sure. like he was the most memorable part of it. Sure. And I would really like like in Warrior, the dynamic between the two brothers, their story was really compelling, and I'd like that to happen with this. Okay. Yeah, hey, sociology hey, geek. Thank you for scrapping two minutes in a row. I think that the best thing about the Seth Rogen movie is that they followed, uh, like the Kevin Smith script, which later, which was later turned into a comic book at Dynamite, which said that like Cato was the competent one, 
And Britt mm-hmm. Reed was this sort of rich, spoiled brat kid playboy whose dad was the Green Hornet. Mm-hmm. And like he was just kind of like a party guy yeah. until his dad died. And then he goes, I have to step up. I got to be the Green Hornet. He's already in good shape. And Cato sort of tells him, like, we need to fight crime. This is what your dad did with my dad or with, you know, my relative or whatever. Oh, so it was actually based on the... I, they pull, they Smith, absolutely like, pulled Lady some Kato stuff. Lady Cato was... Right, like, Lady Cato was Kevin Smith's idea, and they decided to go with male Cato, but they pulled some stuff, and I think that that, I think that, that makes the, the dynamic instantly, like, equal footing if Cato's the guy that's like, I'm the competent one, and even though you have skills, Britt Reed, like, you know, we're both crime fighters, and I've got your back as much as you've got mine. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It, the, it, the, the fact that Gavin, like, didn't even touch on Cato and how important Cato was to the to the mythology of Green Hornet and pop popular culture. I worry that like that he's going to get like the shaft, and that's what I'm mm-hmm. not stoked mm-hmm. about. I would rather it be I rather somebody show up and be like, we're going to try to do what Seth Rogen did, but but do it like seriously with a good script um, and make Britt Reid awesome. But like this is a partnership, and this is a thing yeah. where people think Cato works for him when really Cato is like the he brains and show of the opera. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited for this because I like Gavin O'Connor. I really like Miracle. To me, that is one of the better hockey movies that I've seen. Uh, it does a really good job of telling uh, telling a uniform or telling a, a story with that has kind of like a singular path that uh-huh. incorporates 20 people, which is kind of hard to do when you do movies like that when it's such a big ensemble. I think Warrior, he portrayed the brother the brother it's relationship the between the two characters beautifully. Mm-hmm. Um, he gave Nick Nolte probably like one of the best emotional scenes I've seen. Uh, mm-hmm. At that point, I hadn't seen him moving in a long time. So I think that there's a lot of opportunity for him to really build a really strong bond and relationship between these two characters. Mm-hmm. And I, I would be very surprised if Cato uh, got dodged to the side. I, I, mm-hmm. I highly doubt that's going to happen. Um, I'm hoping he was just pitching Britt Reed because, like, that's the shittier, mm. tougher sell. Right. And, like, people the, are like, ah, I'm, I'm, hoping that, dumb. I'm hoping yeah, he didn't mention Cato because in his mind he's like, oh, no, 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 Cato's, like, set. Like, I don't right. have to really change anything. But, like, Cato's going to be Cato, but the thing I want to make better about Green Hornet is the Britt Sure, Reed plus side. I think, like, you know, a lot of people look at the Green Hornet movie and they're like, it was fun, but it wasn't that good. Yeah, if, like, to me, it was like, oh, this was like a really, this was a superhero version of Rush Hour. Yeah. And I liked it, but, <laughs> I, but you know, it's 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 very flawed. But I think with... What's up? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh. Uh, but I think with this, you know, there's an opportunity to focus on the Green Hornet and build him to be the character that Seth Rogen wasn't. And I think part of the reason why he probably did not mention Kato mm-hmm. is because people probably are looking at the Green Hornet and be like, but we don't want a Seth Rogen version. Right. Like, no, fine, that's fine. I'm no, not going right. to give you a Seth Rogen version. I'm going to focus on making this character different. And then Kato kind of build build even more on top of what he was in that movie because he was kind of the brains of the operation. Yeah. He yeah. he was the one who knew what was happening. He was really like to me, he is a, he's like Alfred, but way cooler because he's uh, physical. Yeah. He goes mm-hmm. out there in the mm-hmm. field. Mm-hmm. He's an equal to Green Hornet and so many other. And he obviously like you know he's younger and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So I think that this is a really good opportunity just based on the other movies that he's done, building relationships with between characters. I think that he really could build. A really good foundation for both of these characters to be unique and different, but to also have parallels that maybe that even they, you know, kind of um, butt heads. The word, yeah, butt heads on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that'd be cool. That's good. I, that's what I wanted to hear because honestly, my only exposure to this series has been the Seth Rogen the movie. Seth, yeah, mm-hmm. and oh, I had left a, a bad taste in my mouth because I never really experienced it. It's, yeah. It's, it's fun. The original one is fun. It is really campy okay. and it's enjoyable. Okay. Uh, but they don't have a script yet, so yeah. I, I'm yeah, looking no forward details. to seeing <laughs> what they do with it. Yeah, Plus yeah. Plus, it's a franchise, so it, or they're hoping it's a franchise. So they'll do one. They're hoping that they'll do, they'll do the first one very, very well. And if people come back and like, you know, this is actually a really good movie. Like the relationships are good. It looks good. It sounds good, and it does fairly well. <gasps> I, I would imagine they're going to try to keep this movie pretty low on the budget. Um, I would hope How they would keep it. Well, I, I would hope that they would keep it under yeah. 125. Even? Yeah, you could do that with that. I'm already projecting, guys, in the future. What if the Green Hornet by Gavin O'Connor doesn't well enough that the sequel they take a page from Marvel, just like Ant Man and the Wasp, and they mm-hmm. call the sequel Cato and the Green Hornet? Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be, oh, that'd be so good. That'd be so cool. So, question for you guys that know this this series: Are there any other characters in this universe, or is it just Green Hornet and Cato? There's a ton of characters. There's yeah. there's characters that were in the TV show. It's as old as a radio serial from yeah. like 1938. Mm-hmm. There was old pulp comic. 
comics and novels and stuff like that, but it's mostly known as the 60s TV show, which I think they may have even had a crossover with Batman they one did. episode. They did. They yeah. did. One of my yeah. favorite clips really? is from when, uh, yeah. at one point, uh, Batman and Robin are climbing up a building, and it's obvious they're just, like, going sideways. Just walking, and they tilted uh, the camera. And then they tilted the camera, and yeah. then the Green Hornet and Kato, like, open up the window, oh, and they're yeah, like, yeah. hello! <laughs> you know? okay. like, it's and like see, nothing to see here. And he has done a comic book, Batman yeah. yes. and the Green Hornet. 66 yeah. okay. and Green yeah. Hornet. Yeah, yep. for sure. It's so fun. It's fun. I would be, it would be awesome if they... But it, the thing is, like, this is going to be uh, Paramount Pictures, I, I believe. Yeah. So the crossover, it's not a possibility. But it would be great if they could make little references to characters like Batman, even if we saw like a bat signal somewhere, mm-hmm. like on a poster in the back wall or something. Uh, like, okay. Great little, <laughs> yeah, nice that would be nod. fun. That would be fun. Yeah, or maybe they're doing the same thing, going up the side of a building, and Ben Affleck just looks out. Right. Like, What's going on? Throws the trash out the window. Yeah, and then he just Batman would uh, not throw the trash out the window. Really like you that. animal. I love that. All That's right. great. Yeah. All right. Good. Good topic, you yeah, guys. Yeah. 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 Good talk. Okay. Now I know a little bit more. Here's, here's some real. Big one. Here's some interesting stuff, guys. Uh, the Inhumans has been announced as being a TV show that is coming next year, fall of next year on oh, ABC. Thank you so much, WDM. Thank, thank you, thank you so much. Every bit counts. You see what I did there? Bits like bits. You get it. We do get it. Thank <laughs> you for the 500 bits. That's awesome. So the Inhumans right up there is going to now be a TV show on ABC in fall of 2017. And what's really interesting, uh, there's a couple of things to really pull from this. Uh, the first thing is that the pilot episode or first two episodes two, yeah. mm-hmm. are going to be available as a movie that you can watch in IMAX for two weeks. Wow. Now, the fact that ABC Studios or Marvel or Marvel Television or ABC Television, whatever, decided to do that, that's super ballsy yeah. because mm-hmm. that is inviting a lot of scrutiny for a TV show, for special effects, for, yeah. for a TV yeah, show to be, to be blown up screen. to be blown up on a screen that big. Now, they're not the first TV show to do that. Game of Thrones did it, I think, a few years back with one of their season premieres. They did season three wow. finale and season four premiere. But, the, but, but the fact but that, that they're... Was, it wasn't necessarily in widespread li- release, was it? No, I don't know. It was limited. It was limited. Yeah. So I don't know theaters. if the IMAX thing is going to be limited or widespread or whatever but Inhumans is going to be on an on the first two episodes on IMAX screens next fall and then the rest of the season you'll be able to watch on ABC also it's worth pointing out that IMAX IMAX Corporation is actually an investing partner on this yes so on the, in the TV show so that's part of the reason why they're, why they're wow. going to IMAX is yeah. because Crazy. IMAX is investing and they said that they wanted to have cinematic quality visual effects so the first two episodes wow. I think are going to look yeah, crazy. I mean, the, yeah. the first episode of Agents of Shield I thought looked great. I thought it looked great. I sure. thought that the the episodes that followed didn't look as good, and then like yeah. their finale looked yeah. good, like that kind of. Hey, you could tell how they sort of how they sort of move around the budget. People are talking about what does it mean for the Marvel Cinematic Universe in the chat. So we don't know. Well, first of all, what is what is the Inhumans, and why should people care? About oh, them? the Inhumans. That's a great question, Erica. I don't Thank know you. Erica? Um, I don't. Okay. Well, I mean, I know a little bit about them. You like, just asked that for the internet, well, Erica. To be honest, you know, I mean, I know, I know, I know a little bit, but I, I haven't read a, t- a really yeah. much okay. myself. I'll give you the difference between a good pitch and a bad pitch. Here's a bad pitch. Eons ago. <laughs> Millennia ago, we need echo. Can there we get was some echo on his voice there was an Let's alien race called the Cree, which came down to Earth and uh, experimented on prehistoric humans prehistoric until they humans. until they and then they just left and then okay. Uh, here, I'm gonna left. try. I'll try a better pitch. Thank the, you for the, bits the Inhumans hey, thanks, is Pandora. a small secret race of people that have superpowers, much like the X Men, much like mutants, except that their origins don't come from. The same place that mutants do, which they're just mm-hmm. people born with genetic powers. Their origins come from a long-lived uh, race of people that have been hidden from humanity that came from an offshoot of like cavemen that were experimented on by aliens mm-hmm. many, 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 many millennia ago. Mm-hmm. And now they, uh, they, they've, they are hidden from humanity. They lived in the Himalayas. They've lived on different planes of reality. They've lived on much like um, where Doctor Strange trains mm-hmm. or where mm-hmm. Iron Fist is from. And now they even live on uh, the blue side of the moon. They've lived on a, uh, a section of the moon. They have super advanced technology that's very alien based, but they're people. And uh, everybody is born sort of normal. And when you're 13 or something, you you get exposed to something called the Terrigen Mists, which will then unlock your inhuman DNA and give you Ooh. powers, I guess, kind of like the X-Men. And uh, they are all of them led by a royal family where the leader is Black mm-hmm. Bolt, a.k.a. Blackagar Boltagon. That's his real name. Black Agar Boltagon. Right there in this picture on uh, above him is Medusa, his cousin slash wife. Yes. Uh, 
Uh, <laughs> <you've got> a, <laughs> to yep. force all your questions, yes. Yep. They're all kind of related. They're all kind of not related. You've got his uh, his other uh, advisor there, Karnak, on the upper right, who's like a martial arts expert, a guy who could literally pinpoint like a person's uh, weaknesses and go like this and then like shut you down, just like, yeah, physically. Just like you did when, when you started pitching that thing to Adam. Exactly, and he yep. fell asleep. Mm -hmm. uh, on the left to of uh, Black Bolt, who's right in the dead center, is Crystal, and she can control elements, and she happens to just look very attractive and, and human, which is why Johnny Storm of the Human Torch kind of fell for her, and I think they may have even, eventually Quicksilver actually uh, got married with her and had a baby. Oh. Quicksilver, the uh, Magneto's son. And then on the far left is Triton. He's an aquatic inhuman. And then on the far right is Gorgon. And he's got these huge, like, hooved feet. So there's a bunch of different interesting characters. They've got different powers. Black Bolt's power is that his voice is so powerful that if he were to whisper, he could knock down a building. And if he were to yell, he could level a city. That's how mm -hmm. powerful his voice is. So he doesn't speak. His wife speaks for him, Medusa, who's also his cousin. Yes, they bone. That's part of it. Um, so it was created by Stanley and Jack Kirby in the 60s. And uh, that's the Inhumans. Now... Spinning off of ABC television, I think the reason they decided to do this is because they've been using inhuman characters and the inhuman idea of, um, of, of uh, people that, are, that have abilities and they're exposed to mists and stuff like that on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. for a couple seasons. Sky, the main character, right. is actually, been letterings of that for a while. Is actually mm -hmm. Quake or Daisy Johnson, who is an inhuman. That's how she gets her powers. And um, uh, they've been using a lot of those characters. So I happen to think that this is just going to be a sort of a spinoff of, of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I think maybe Agents of Shield might even be canceled. And they might just turn into this. Like they'll they're gonna kill off Coulson. They're gonna move away from Shield and just focus on inhuman this is characters. Gonna be significantly. Ah, yes. Yeah. Thanks for resubbing. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is gonna be significantly more special effects and yeah. superpowers and Possibly. spandex. Possibly, yeah. I mean, depending Most on likely, depending right? on what they want to do. Because Kevin Feige, last time we asked him, we the internet. What's up with an Inhumans movie that was pushed off of their release slate for yeah. Marvel Studios? It was supposed Studios. to come out in 2020. 2020, and then it was just pushed off of their release slate. He's, he promised. He goes, there'll be an Inhumans movie, I promise, don't worry, but it might happen later than sooner, but we're working on it and we're figuring it out. And I think people are already coming to the conclusion that ABC TV pulled this because they're pissed at Marvel Studios, because they're pissed at Kevin Feige. ABC TV, Marvel TV, is run by a different division. They report to Marvel Comics. Marvel Studios, as far as we know, they are a, a division who then broke off from them, and they report to Disney proper. The so Redman Scott says reports are stuff. that it won't be an AOS spinoff, and it is only eight episodes. Yeah. Oh, so is it just a mini series? So it's okay, a mini series. series. I can totally yeah, see episodes. being so like. So you'll get the okay, first two in theaters right. and the additional six on TV, which I think is great. That's I think it's smart. way better. I think the biggest yeah. problem with all the superhero shows that we have now yeah. is. Just too many episodes. Yeah. 22, right. 23 Agreed. episodes. The flavor of the week, it's and then too, it makes it. It's too blend. fucking much. Yeah. Like, I would be fine if they shortened Flash, Arrow, Legends of Tomorrow, all these shows mm -hmm. to well, like eight to 12, 12 episodes Renee? at Renee? most. Renee? Yeah. Yeah. Five Kush? At most. <laughs> yeah. It's just too much. In terms of this, though, but I, I have to disagree. I, I, I do not think that this could have been done without Kevin Feige going, yes. Really? You cannot. I, I, there's no way. There's no way. There's no well, way. No, you met, actually, now that you're saying it like that, because if they're doing an Inhuman show and it's about these characters that we have up on the screen right now, these are the main Inhumans. This is the right. royal family. This is Game of Thrones shit. This is what the movie would. This been. is what the movie would have been, or might still be. Right. Now, I don't know what the TV show is going to be. The TV show, they might fool you, Adam, and they might go, oh, oh, we're saying it's an Inhuman show, but it's really about Daisy Johnson but they and did, this other but character I think there was a report, other character. There was a report, I think, that did say it was going to feature these characters. The royal family? Yeah. Well, then mm -hmm. then, that, then and, that might be Marvel Studios. And as Marvel much as Studios. Ike Perlmutter you know, is the guy who kind of runs Marvel Entertainment, we've got to remember that Jeff Loeb really is the guy who oversees Marvel Television. Correct. So I don't see I don't see reason why, why Jeff Loeb and Kevin Feige would be on bad terms. I think that the, I think that maybe Kevin Feige looked at the slate and said, "Inhumans doesn't just doesn't really fit where we want to take Phase Four. Yeah, let's try to repurpose it. I mean, it was the first movie to get knocked off the slate. Yeah, I think it probably in like in Marvel in Marvel Cinematic Universe history yeah. of announcing stuff. It's it's never happened before. So the fact that it got knocked off the slate completely, mm -hmm. um, I think Kevin Feige probably figured like, you know what, it might be a better home to have be on television. We've already they've already started introducing inhuman characters into Agents of Shield. Yeah. It might be a better place for these two things to coexist. And I think uh, instead of maybe canceling Ag Agents of Shield, we'll have that show that'll take place on Earth. Mm -hmm. This one that might take out take place in outer space primarily or other parts of the uh, universe. Yeah. Um, and then I think there's a good opportunity to cross over. 
Hell to see yeah. J- Daisy Johnson in the Inhuman show, to see Black Bolt mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. Agents of mm-hmm. S.H.I.E.L.D. So. I, I would have loved it if Kevin Feige made this announcement. Sure. I would have loved it if he was a guy that went, hey guys, we thought about it and we're working with Marvel TV. Sure. We actually have a very collaborative relationship. Because up to this point, I've been frustrated that the movies haven't acknowledged a single thing that the TV shows have done. Yeah. And the TV show continues to just make reference to the movies. Because it's easy for the TV show people to make a movie, I understand that, or to make references to the movies, I understand yeah. that, because the TV uh, schedule is different. But it could have been so easy for the Ancient One in uh, Doctor Strange to make a reference to Kun Lun, to make a reference to that. It's like, mm-hmm. cool, Iron Fist is coming out next year. It could have been so easy. I don't want... Tony Stark, Robert Downey Jr. to meet a dead Coulson who we thought he was dead. I'm not asking for that. I'm asking for, like, reference the shit that's happening in the shows. Have a character in Captain America Civil War be like, what about that vigilante in Hell's Kitchen? Nah, forget about that. It's that easy. Like, you guys know what shows are coming out. And the show people have announced the shows, and they actually do deliver. And so far, Marvel Studios has been the one that's like, we're making a movie. Psych, just kidding. Inhumans. They're the the ones that drop the ball. I don't do that more often. What's that? I I do wonder why they don't do that more often. Maybe because they assume that if you're watching the TV show, you've already seen the films, but maybe not vice versa. But it's like, but if you're doing that, I think think Marvel also assumes that. Uh, uh, people who walk into one of their movies haven't seen every single Marvel Studios movie. There's right, 14 right, of them. Right, I don't think. I, I think that Marvel is hoping that people are assuming that people haven't seen every single one. But if they have, then this movie is going to be a payoff for those yeah. for those faithful audience. Yeah. So but why also, not? Do but I also do think thing. that the Marvel movies. I think the difference between the movies is that as much as they are part of a bigger universe, you can watch the Winter Soldier not having watched anything else, and you may you may question where these relationships have kind of started. Mm-hmm. But, but you can still yeah. watch the movie and understand the movie. And enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. And the movies also don't... Some of the events do affect other movies, but it's not such a big ripple effect that you cannot... You can not like you can jump into Civil War and you would be fine because you kind of get an understanding of what's happening. They sure. explain the beginning, I, kind of the planting seeds of Civil War enough. I don't enough. know, but like you would... There would be way too many characters to figure out. I mean, I know people who like, I've you, seen I mean, like... Handful of Marvel movies, they've not all of like them, Iron but they've Man seen Civil and War like, and they're uh, like, that's Captain a really America. good movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But there's also people on the other end, which I didn't know existed, like my little brother. He walked into Civil War, walked out because he didn't like it. I was like, what the hell's wrong with you? You are Had not he my sibling. Seen other... No, no. He, he was not really that into it. And, and I was like, how are you, my little brother? But at the same time, we have to realize well, that he, he hasn't seen any other Marvel films? Here and there. Okay. He's well, not that's really the thing into is it. It's, it's but, like the stakes aren't there. Like, right. you don't know that, about the that's, relationship. That's the, between the point I'm going so. to, though. Like, yeah. we are in a community where, yes, we all yeah. watch this and follow it religiously. There's a lot of people who don't. Like, they don't yeah. follow this. And so what we have to realize is that this is a whole nother genre, not even genre, a whole nother subsect of a already confusing Marvel Cinematic Universe. So think about introducing all of these, because there's more than these six characters. There's so many other characters that they need to do. So what I'm thinking they could possibly do is uh, use the Inhumans as another phase. So introduce them, give us a little taste, see what it tastes like. A little taste of the glory. And then maybe do Civil War II, Mm -hmm. where the, Mm. the Inhumans come in and all mm. of a sudden it causes this big world changing catastrophic event. Right. So it could be a whole other phase of the Marvel Universe by itself. But just giving us a little taste, because this little eight episode story, it's it's going to be big because we're going to introduce these characters. Yeah, there's a but lot it's of not going to be world changing. Yeah, when you right. get them with everybody else, there's, there's yeah. you can mix them all in properly. And I think that's what they're doing with this. They're just giving us mm-hmm. a little taste yeah. of what it could be like with these people. But for real, can we kidnap your younger brother and, and force him to watch all the Marvel movies? Guess what his name is? What? Hector. Don't even say <laughs> Yeah. His Wait, name is Hector. Did you, I'm did like, you not I'm know that? I didn't I know that. that no, but it's no. a, that's a funny His name thing. is Hector. And uh, he's not like this Hector. But uh, he's uh, a cool, no, he's a cool kid. But he's just not like, really into the comic like stuff. Like a movie plot. Just, this is your Martha moment. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> Why did you say that name? Why did you say that name? Oh, my God. Lucas, what do you think, bud? Inhuman, should we give a shit? Yay, nay. I don't know much about the Inhumans. Okay. So, uh, see, yeah. there you go. That's what I'm saying. Like, all right. So, what if we dropped all these characters on you all of a sudden? Would you care? Would you not want to watch it? Is it too much to watch? Like, what? How do you I feel? I would want to watch it, given the track record. Uh, yeah. I've enjoyed everything so far. So yeah. Okay. I would watch okay. it. I would. I, I'm I'm in the same camp as Lucas. Like I I don't I'm not intimately familiar with a lot of these characters. Uh, it seems like a lot to drop at one time. But all of their TV 
Uh, their big TV events have been really great, and eight episodes would be perfect. You know, a perfect arc. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm, you know, I'll, I'll watch whatever TV yeah. they put it's, out. It's, I'm uh, happy. It's, it's a lot of stuff, but I think they're pacing it out in an okay yeah. way. Yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, okay. no. There was really was good at, at, I mean, by by Civil War, you know, they, it's just they had so many characters to deal with, and they right. still like paced everything out really right. well. With the and, and then we can't forget that we still have a Captain Marvel. And a Black Panther movie coming, mm-hmm. yes. which is still huge in its own. Like, there's still a lot of stuff they have to do. Mm-hmm. So giving us just a little taste of the Inhumans, I think, is good yeah. because they're really cool. I really, especially, what's her name? The girl with the hair in the back? Medusa. 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 Cool. Her so hair, cool. her, like, doing that in a, in a show, you can't keep that up week after week yeah. after week in a regular <sighs> series. Cause Eight episodes, man. Her hair is... Do you know about her hair? It's Crazy. just fully so it's CG. it's just super yeah. long. It drags yeah. on the floor. She uses it to, like, whip people around, and it's, yeah. it's her power. They're probably going to do it with CG because, let me say, even normal wigs are a beezy to yeah. brush out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. I think the smart way of doing that is to just put a bald cap on her that has a bunch of motion tracking points on it. Yeah, it yeah. would be the only way you could do her hair. But yeah. still, yeah. that's a lot. Hair and fur yeah. is still very difficult they, to do. They barely so. figured out hair like 10 years ago in yeah. Incredibles. You remember? No, they still great. haven't even they figured still, it out. Yeah. Though. Yeah. Like, it looked good in The Incredibles, but yeah, there's but still, still so much. Yeah, but still not quite there when you're comping yeah. it in. And right. Incredibles is animated. Right. Yeah. Plus... Long hair. If you notice, they did it in Zootopia. Zootopia yeah. was great. It broke fur ground with was fur. Amazing. But if you notice, nobody really has long hair. Yeah. Mm, it's yeah. all short hair. Not even Shakira's character. No. No. The, uh, yeah, the everybody the, was short hair. The new, the yeah. uh, or the uh, the the guy at the at the nudist colony. The, he had yeah. long. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. But it was just that one character, and yeah, he didn't really move much. much. Yeah. So it's it's a difficult undertaking to take on Medusa's hair that's and true. her that's, powers. That'll and be stuff. really expensive. Yeah, or exactly. they're gonna have to have like a whole hair stylist team. I don't know if they could even have practical hair. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so long it's and rough. crazy. It's yeah, rough. it's gonna get all it's dirty really, by the end really, of the day. Really and expensive. Yeah. Wigs are expensive. Yo. Bullfax says. Plus, it has to be floaty. It's very floaty mm-hmm. in the comics. Yeah. It's yeah. like yeah. if she's underwater. Yeah. Constantly, right. Where it's well, just well they did the pirates. The pirates, and it looks right. Right, and it's but still kind of Disney. Maybe they just borrowed the technology. Yeah, I didn't like it that much. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sorry. So the technology's not fully there, yeah. so they have to spend a lot of money on her hair at yeah. this point. There's just, there's a lot of stuff uh, to think about. Yeah. So uh, also, uh, are we going to give the topic for tonight? Or were we supposed to give that at the top? Or well, uh, do we l- 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 we'll finish the news. Okay. We'll finish the news. Yeah, let's get through the news. Yeah, let's get through All the right. news. All right. All Who's right. next? Who's next? Who's uh, next? Also, I just want to remind people that uh, every five, I'm, I'm going to assume this. Lucas has not re- Okay, cool. Okay, great. Every, every five <laughs> subs, we're giving away Steam keys. <laughs> and, I'm not paying attention. And please. every 10. Sorry, am I, am I too hot? No, every it. 10, or at once we hit 10, we're going to give away Watch Dogs 2. Mm-hmm. So wow! If you have Amazon Prime, I haven't played that game yet. And you got Twitch, link those bad boys together. Wow. You get a free and sub to Hyper free. RPG, baby. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, also, want to remind you guys that you get access to the Discord and you get five dollars off a lot of our Teespring campaigns that we do here at Hyper. So use lots of perks, use y'all. Them. Lots use of perks. Them. Shano yeah. Meads asks, do they even interact with the chat? Because that's the point of live streams. Uh, How me dare reading, you? Me, wow. me reading that question just I've proved that yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yes. Uh, at what point did you join the stream? Yeah. My <laughs> Granted, I will say the conversations have been Yeah, we've been we've been going. Thorough. Yeah, yeah, Which yeah. Which is yeah. fine because mm-hmm. I think if the conversations are not thorough, what's the point of having them? Yeah. Right. So this is my story and I am so thrilled. This is uh, at the time that we need this the most, we get more news about why The Last Man, the TV show. So for those who are not familiar with this masterwork by Brian K. Vaughn, it is a story about The Last Man on Earth. Uh, there is a disease, a mysterious disease, that has wiped out all men in the entire world except for one. And he has to navigate his way through the political and uh, just post-apocalyptic climate uh, as the last man and it's so very good that's his monkey ampersand who plays a very pivotal role in the story and it's it's such a good story and and it's you know, 
the representation in it for women is astonishing. It's got um, it's all women except for Yorick. L, L. Ronan you know, asks, "I am legend again." Yeah, if the vampires <laughs> were women, yes, right. If the, if the zombies legend. were women, essentially, <laughs> the zombies were women. Uh, and uh, it's it, it's fantastic, and it's at a time where we I think we really need it. And so we just got news that the they have picked their showrunner. It is Michael Green, who is currently the showrunner of Stars. Uh, American Gods, which is yeah. Neil Gaiman's mm-hmm. beloved masterpiece. So he, here's another funny thing: Zero Cipher says sounds like a pretty good situation. I can tell when people oh. say that that they e. haven't read the comic book. Yeah, e. I can tell Zero Cipher has read the comic book. I'm pretty sure they Zero Cipher is cool. Fully, sounds yeah. like okay. Okay. my jingles. Zero no, no. Cipher is oh. cool, so I'm pretty sure Zero Cipher is being cheeky right okay. now. Probably because okay. it's it's yeah, the last man on earth, and it was it's so cool. Like before the comic starts, it has the statistics on like mm. how many airline pilots are men, how many doctors are mm-hmm. men, how many mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. just the normal kinds of traffic controllers. The kinds of things you wouldn't think about, like if all the men suddenly died. How many, how many militaries like, around the world? Yeah, and that's yeah. the thing. It's like yeah. it, Israel is the only one that's like yes. still okay because they can they uh, the have a constructed force of women as well. Yeah, and it's it's so it's so fascinating because it's such a thought exercise and and. I, I really, it's one of my favorite comics, and for years I've been saying that I want it to be mm-hmm. a TV series because yeah. it's going to employ like every woman in Hollywood, and I, I've said that I really wanted a lot of women involved behind the camera, so it's, uh, you know, hearing that it's a male showrunner is, is you know, it could be, it could be better, but at the mm-hmm. same time, obviously he's a capable a human being because he's on Neil Gaiman's uh American gods and I'm hoping that they're going to hire female directors yeah. for this for like everything Jessica Jones. J- Jessica Jones style um, starting off with Lexi Alexander would be my pitch of course mm-hmm. who did pun- the pun- the good Punisher film and uh, yeah so so what do we think like do you, do we think that this is gonna move this forward are we gonna see it soon do you, do you have thoughts? Uh, the the showrunner also worked on the reboot of uh, Murder on the Orient Express and the Blade Runner sequel, Logan and Green Lantern. Oh, some of those are bad. Yeah, yeah some of those are pretty bad. Some of those bad. are hit and uh, miss. So it's for me, it's really tough to judge, to solely judge somebody's somebody's capabilities based on their previous work Mm -hmm. because to me it really depends on how much of a contribution they had to it right we don't know you know because it's like you're dealing with multiple people so it's it's very easy to just say like well he's a showrunner he should be in charge and he should make it good and it's like well that's not exactly how film production Mm -hmm. works Mm -hmm. uh you have to do all there's a lot more responsibility and a lot of other people involved to make things work uh in terms of this show i think this is like the 15th or 57th time that we've heard that this thing is on and off again. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, there was supposed to be with Shia LaBeouf a few years back mm-hmm. at Warner I Brothers, that. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the option, w- they lost the option exactly. for a little while, yeah, and yeah. but it seems like it's they're starting to try and fast track it now. Yeah, right, right. so I mean... I'm I'm very interested in this. I think it's a great concept. I think it is an amazing opportunity. Oh, and, and by the way, when I say the good Punisher film, I mean, like, the other ones were even worse <laughs> so right yeah you know yeah plus i mean but e- even that though ever since uh since punisher you know lexi alexander has done episodes of supergirl uh that have been really good she's done some stuff with arrow yeah. so uh, uh, there are plenty of directors who are women who have done amazing work on television mm-hmm. and in film uh michelle mclaren is a person who's done one, one of Bad. the showrunners mm-hmm. of i forget her name but uh one of the showrunners of westworld is of a woman mm-hmm. and I think she'd do a bang up job on this. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean I think there's <clears throat> there's plenty of resources and you know, yes, I, I would love there to I would love it to be a diverse uh, group of people. And it's tough to say right now because all all we have is the showrunner. We have literally nothing else. Right. We have it no could, idea who it else could is just involved. as easily fall through the cracks. It at could this be point it could be one showrunner and then everybody else could be a female or it could mm-hmm. be, you know, 50 50, 60 40, yeah, you right. know, female female majority. Um but yeah, I think I think it really is a good opportunity. Plus, I would like to see that because it would be interesting to see how one main male character has to literally interact with women only, not just on camera, but off. It camera. would be really messy. Right, right, right. I would right. love to see how that would influence the performance. I think that'd be really yeah. interesting. Oh, that's, that's a good really point. Yeah, that's a good point. Really the good point. news is, is that unlike other things that are being adapted, even something like Green Hornet, which could very easily fall into the category of redoing old racist tropes sure. with like Cato as the manservant 
the the source material of why the last man like there's no way that you could turn that into something that's not uh, a completely fair and equal feminist story uh, something that showcases women in ways that we haven't seen in movie and t- movies and television that, yeah, you know, yeah. It ju- it's just baked right into the source material yeah right. it is, right. At least it is. you don't have news. to redo anything there's uh, it's mostly women, women, women of color uh, yeah. and uh, there's trans uh, trans women mm-hmm. or I guess trans men in this case uh, but it's it's so it's it's so revolutionary uh, for comics, and 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 it's such a great story. And I really want. I've been wanting to see this on screen for so long. Yeah, it needs to happen. I just. I'm. I would love because as soon as I heard that the statistic that like even extras in Hollywood are cast predominantly male, mm-hmm. yeah. I was like, what? Extras are like How fifty. Does that make sense? They're supposed yeah. to be fifty percent population male, fifty yeah. percent. You know. But like that, even with extras casting, they tend to lean more towards males. They yep. tend to yep. lean more towards white people as opposed to people. Of, mm-hmm. I was like, then wh- why the last man forces everyone to go? Okay, we're casting for extras, only female. Yeah, only they have female. to be only have female. To. It's That's crazy, part of the story. <laughs> and it's really interesting if you look in the comic to uh, just the the diversity of types of women, especially in the background. I'll admit, most of the the women that are the lead characters are still like they're mostly one body type, super mm-hmm. hot. Uh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> they're all super, super, super six hot. foot tall, super uh, hot women. Yeah, and that is one thing I pointed out. But but occasionally, like there's different uh, places where you see like a lot of different kinds of women because mm-hmm. they're, they're yeah. really they go all over the world too. There's a lot of so, like what I call side quests in the comic, right? Yeah, Erica, yeah where yeah, like yeah. you meet like an older woman who's like a pirate or something like there's yeah, so many exactly, great little side exactly. quests where you meet different a types lot of, of queer characters. gals too as you can mm-hmm. imagine in a world without men. well yeah i mean what hey, are you man. gonna do yeah i mean yeah. that ties in perfectly with wonder woman when people were talking about right mm-hmm. sexuality of that character i'm like she's on an island of nothing but women yeah, yeah. It would yeah. Make what, you, what do you think sense? is gonna happen like how is they're that gonna how is that bump weird? their uglies together they're gonna yeah. <laughs> feels good leave them alone we're getting we're gonna nod from lucas they're ugly lucas knows what i'm talking about Hell yeah, bro. Bump their uglies, Hector. Hell yeah, dude. How many beers have you had? (laughs) Two. I'm Uh, ready for more beers. There's more beer right there, Hector. And grab another beer. Super. Yeah, so if if you haven't read Why the Last Man, now is the perfect time to pick it up. Uh, just yeah. just pick up the first trade paperback. You can find it cheap on Amazon. And, and, I, and, and they even put the whole series across five trade paperbacks yes. that are like ultimate yes, yes. collection. Yeah, type yeah there's really? an ultimate collection. I'm, gonna, well, I'm actually we'll going to look for that and buy it right I, now. I would highly, highly recommend it. It's it's a captivating story. Like yeah. for me, I love the comic series. I'm going to buy series. it right now. It's yeah. one of my favorite. The Ooh, middle. Oh, wait. What, what, Talison's what, what, in the what? chat. Oh, Executive no. Goth. Yes. Uh, hello, Talison. Uh, why the Last Man has gotten their gotten a showrunner? It's the same guy who's doing uh, American Gods, mm-hmm. and so this means after being in development hell forever, it's kind of getting fast tracked. Uh, everybody, say hi to Talison. Who's oh hi? Uh, Executive Goth, uh, Talison Jaffe of a little show called Critical Role. Oh, I know. Yeah. Right. Oh, welcome, so, Talison. Oh, I'm, I'm I'm sure Talison's a huge Y fan. Yes, yeah. uh, Talison is a huge comic yeah, 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 yeah. Some of the middle of the of the story dragged a little bit, but the ending, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna say this two times: the ending is my favorite ending in all of fiction that I've ever experienced. Wow. The ending is my favorite ending of, in all of fiction that I've ever experienced. That's how much I love the ending to Why the Last wow. Man. It's really, really so it great, right? It is so right? worth it to read the whole yeah. series. It's so good. Oh, yeah. my God. Oh, there's a lot of comics Sorry in this. Oh, that's thousand. kind of expensive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like 110 bucks. What? 103. All of them? Oh, no, wait. That's Absolute Why. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for the oh, resub. Okay. Yeah, thanks Oof. for the resub. Okay, I'll, I'll try to find it later. I need to pay attention hey, to the show. Hey, I'll send you a link. Right yeah, Here, send give me your phone. I'll, I'll take you to a website right now. I'll get it real cheap. I, I know your yeah. website. Welcome right. to You've sent it to me several times. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm super excited about this, and I and I sincerely hope that they take all the necessary steps to make this to they they seize this opportunity while they have it. With the situation right now, with things going on, I think they will focus on this type of situation. One might hope. One I think they will. I think they will. Go to the library. Yes, All that's right. right. Uh, I, oh, I read a lot of that's it. That's right. Uh, there is a library right next library. to my work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And if they don't have it, you should definitely request it. Yeah, and yeah. They'll, and they'll have to order it because mm-hmm. they're the library. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> awesome. <laughs> they'll spend that money so for well. me. I know. Yeah. No, I got to read it, Adam. I got to. You got to? I got to. Mm-hmm. All right, gonna move to the last topic. This is a this is an interesting topic. Uh, this is not con- confirmed. This is a rumor going around right now. 
Multiple trades are. Ooh, Ooh thank Veku. you for the follow, Viku. 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 I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Viku. Yeah, Viku. Viku is a thumper in training. Thank hey, you very yeah. much. I'm gonna take this opportunity to go pee. Oh. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> in front of the camera to do that. Okay, so I'm just letting you guys know cool. what I'm doing. Oh, hey, thanks beer? for them bits, Sagaras. Is that a goddess? Can you whip out your wiener while you do it? No, not here, not on screen. Okay, Adam, what's the news on this? I haven't heard about this all day. So this is a rumor going around right now that Disney is potentially looking to buy Netflix. Now, Netflix is obviously a a juggernaut streamer rivaling uh, Amazon Hulu, all the other streaming services right now, and but but the big thing for them is that they really want to up their original content by fifty percent. Uh, they really really want to push for original content. That's a big thing for them. And some of the other streaming services have a little bit more of an edge uh, over them. Things like HBO Go obviously has so many different types of shows that are basically one hundred percent original mm. content minus the movies. Right, right, right. Um, which, which is kind of like HBO has always kind of been the place for, for movie premieres and stuff. Netflix is really trying to catch up in that regard. They really want to push out more content. I mean, we've seen how many original things have come out in the last year. <gasps> oh, oh, Mooney oh, Tunes. Mooney Tunes. Oh. Welcome to the team. Yeah, thank you. Very thank much you. For Welcome subscribing. to the Thumper family. Thank yep. you so much. Your subscription makes it so that we can continue to have all these conversations together. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah dog. And oh, just yeah. to remind people that every five subs, we're giving away Steam Keys. Every 10. Or at 10, we're going to give away a copy of Watch Dogs 2. And then if we raise $500 during this episode, we're going to give away the official Cineverse t-shirt. We're going to sell it, send it yep. anywhere around the world. Yep. That's right. And normally we don't get to ship it to yeah, you outside so, of the United uh, States. So you're, you're, you're not let's in make the it US. happen. Absolutely. I'm scrolling the chat because there's so many people going, no, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. no. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's really interesting seeing the split. And I'm also yeah, similarly right. split because that would be more money and power behind more original content, which is great on Netflix. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I do not trust that Disney could be hands off and let them do mm -hmm. a lot of the creative mm -hmm. things that they are doing right now. Right. Well, I think it's yes and no because I think we all we got to remember what happened with Marvel Studios that it got acquired by Disney in 2009. Right. We got to look at what happened with Lucasfilm when they got acquired by Disney in 2012. Pixar. For the most part, yeah, Pixar. For the most part, Disney has done a really great job at mostly just advising and really letting Marvel Studios, Kevin Feige and Lucasfilm, uh, Kathleen I, Kennedy, I kind of let them run the ship. I think that they definitely have guys like Bob Iger and, and uh, Alan Horn who give them support and they give them suggestions that would probably be beneficial to kind of make them feel like they're more part of the Disney family when it comes to marketing and all kinds of mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the actual productions, from from where we're sitting, it feels like, you know, Kevin Feige is really the guy who's running Marvel Studios. Right. It's really Kathleen Kennedy who's running the ship at Lucasfilm. Oh, oh, hey, oh, 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 oh. Welcome, Welcome to the Thumper Thank you very family. Much. Subscribing Thank to you Twitch so much Prime. for subscribing. That's awesome. Guys, I can't I think we should all not forget that Jessica Jones is technically Disney. Yeah. Do you know what it I'm is. saying? Like, that's like that's yes. like a hardcore that to me is like the most hardcore an adult that Marvel Studios has gone. Right, right. And Marvel yeah. being owned by Disney, you know? I mean even look at true, look at Luke Cage, the things that the the sure. social the social issues that it tackles and even just the adult nature of those shows. Yeah. Uh, the the language that they use, it's a, they're they're mature. It's, they're it's not, not like so many but it's not gonna it's not mm -hmm. gonna be just properties that they're gonna create. It's gonna be also which movies they're gonna distribute. So sure. things right, like right, totally. right. Do you, I don't know. I don't know if I'd trust them to pick up something like Beasts of No Nation, right. or or uh, you know things that are, go against the Disney brand. It's because it's still you know. But we've got movies. We've got movies that have been released under the Disney banner, just under different different companies. You know, we've got Touchstone Pictures, mm -hmm. which still puts Thank out movies. Thank you so and Buena much Vista. for three. Buena, yeah, like they yeah, put out yeah. more of the mature Miramax. content. Oh. Miramax, yeah, Pulp so. Fiction was technically a Disney film. Pulp yeah. Fiction. So. I don't know if Miramax was owned by Disney back then. Yeah, was but, it? but now sure. it is. But what, regardless of the fact, I mean, Disney understands that it, it they, they are not they cannot be just one hundred percent geared toward children. That's a huge part of Disney. Yeah. But a lot of their subsidiaries, they understand it's like this is this is a mixture. This is a mixture of uh, adult and child. This is a mixture of teen and, mm -hmm. and older people. Mm -hmm. Or this is just straight up adult content. Uh, Alien um, Knitter says, oh, "How oh, is Jessica oh. Jones part of the Disney brand?" Erica makes sense. Okay. Um, oh, thank, thank you for you, the bits. Thank you, ninety two. That's true. There there are things. I mean, it's part of Marvel. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and so I, I they will stray not necessarily they will stray from like family friendly entertainment 
but it's stuff that they own. So what? Are, how are they going to treat properties that they don't own? Though? Well, right. part of the thing is too is like you know, they've been looking at some of the deals that Netflix has has had recently. You look at Zootopia. Zootopia basically premiered, got the premiere on Netflix. It's on Netflix right now. You can go watch it. Yeah. But that doesn't really happen too much with Disney stuff. So I think I think maybe there's a possibility that they're kind of testing this this platform yeah. out. This this idea of maybe mixing together. Hey, welcome Thank you, Redwood, Redwood Coast. Coast. Thank you. Uh, Thank you very much for your subscription. Impossible Girl says, what's going to happen to things like DC shows that are on Netflix? Look, I think I think we all we know that all of these things Great are in question. rotation. All of these things are rotate are in yeah. rotation. Mm -hmm. I don't think that Disney would be Disney, in my opinion, would be dumb if they started to circulate out things that are not a part of the Disney brand. Right. It's not stupid. just going to be Disney movies and that's exactly. all Netflix is going right. to be. No. It would be it would at that point you might as well just call it Disney Flix because right. that's all it would right. be. And to me that's a huge loss to the company. Yeah. You will have people unsubscribing because yeah. they can't access stuff. I wouldn't how, subscribe I don't to, it. Subscribe how, to that. Imagine how many yeah. things uh, have built Netflix so far in terms of original programming that are the complete opposite of what we consider right. to be the Disney brand. Things like Orange is the New Black, things like House of Cards. Mm -hmm. These things are not going to go away. I feel like. mm -hmm. uh, they're not going to mm -hmm. uh, go away, but will they be uh, more willing to give money to these kind of ventures? I mean, I think if Disney is looking into potentially buying Netflix, I think they have to look at all of those things. They have to look yeah, at right, all of right, those right. moving parts yeah. of, of Netflix and say, like, great, Netflix wants to put out 50% more content by this time. This is how much an investment it's going to be. This is how we're going to, you know, kind of collect on that investment. So right. I think that if you are Disney, and you're one of the richest companies in the world. I mean, Disney is winning the box office right now in terms of revenue mm -hmm. because of things like Lucasfilm, because of Marvel, because of Disney proper. They're killing it right now. So they, if anybody has has room, wiggle room to spend money, it's Disney. Okay. And, you know, there's also been a lot of talks. Bob Iger is planning his retirement. He's going to retire within within five years, three to three to five years. Um, they're saying he's, the Reed he's Hastings. He's going to make a couple more yeah. billion right. dollars. Reed, Reed Hastings, who's the current CEO of Netflix, is being... <laughs> Looked at as a potential replacement. So if right. he replaces Bob Iger right. and they and they assume control of Netflix, then I think that he's he's going to definitely come in there and say like, yes, I understand. We want to put Disney stuff on here. It'll finally be an opportunity to put things like Star Wars on there, Star Wars Rebels, Clone Wars, all all of the movies in the Disney Vault, Snow White, Bambi, yeah. all these things. Song of the South. Oh wait, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that, doesn't again, that doesn't exist. That doesn't exist. All of Hector. these things that that we have limited access to because you know they get put into the vault. They only get released released every so often. They're not on TV as much. So yeah. I think that this is an opportunity for Disney yeah. to take their entire catalog, their historic catalog. Empty Knock has there. a good point. I'm more concerned with other publishers that might want to stream content because of their affiliation with Disney. That's also another good point. There's some companies that maybe don't want to do business with Disney. Yeah, and sure. and. Yeah. Uh, Pork Chop Thirty Seven said, "I think that media consolidation is always a bad idea. Right? I it's it's a dangerous game, it it, is. and Disney owns so much now. It's hard to keep neutral on things, and like for yep. news sites and right. There's a lot of wheels you have to turn in yeah. order to put stuff out, basically. And that's the point that I kind of wanted to make. This whole homogenization of." Getting everything under the Disney banner, I think what you're saying, Adam, is a very good, very good point. Very you make optimistic. some excellent points. It's very optimistic, but at the same time, we always talk about how diversity and more competition ups other people's games. You know, yeah. Netflix is coming up as a big hitter yeah, in the business world really and the movie edgy. world. They're killing doing it. a lot of Absolutely risky killing. things. And and Disney sees this and they're like, oh, competition, buy them out. We're not competing anymore. They're cutting into our money. Oh, Disney would be mm. fucking crazy if they did that. Right. I mean, it's exactly. not that they're it's not it's that they're gonna not. cut. No, them no, out. they won't it's cut just it that out. They it's just, control it. They're now. just like, okay, this is ours now. Sure. But at the same point, I, I have a feeling that Netflix doesn't have money issues right now to begin with. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't understand why they would go 100% into it without seriously considering every single aspect. I mean, I think Disney, I think, or sorry, I think Netflix looks, potentially looks at this opportunity and goes, there is a, a, a possibility to expand hugely. I know, I agree. Yeah, I agree, but I think more Netflix, money and a lot more power, but I think Netflix could get there though. I think eventually, sure. given a little bit more time, and given that we know the CEO of the company, remember when they were going to do that split off, where they were going to have like a whole separate company with the uh, with the, the DVD mail? service? Right, yeah. uh, they were, were going like, to call it Flixster or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Flixster like, and then Netflix. That. And the, yeah. and, the, and the CEO listened. He was like, okay, you guys are right. We're going to keep everything the same. They changed yeah. the prices a little bit. He's a smart guy. Like, he listens to people. And so in, in that spirit, I think that he is 
possibly one of those guys that because he started netflix out of his garage it was a garage company yeah he's one of those dudes who's like do i want to keep this all to myself or do i want to sell out to the mouse like every other company or do i want to go and be the ceo of disney damn i mean he possibly could you know do that I mean? too there's there's two edges or two sides to this coin right. you know it's it's very possible that this could open that scares huge. me the guy doesn't have i mean he's a businessman but he doesn't have like a background in animation does Bob Iger have a background in animation? I don't, I don't Probably think you not. need to, though. Uh, I think the most important thing Sorry. is to be a smart businessman. <laughs> oh, man. I want yeah, people to have a background in animation. <laughs> but that's why you hire people. All right. Fair yeah, enough. Exactly. That's you why hire you have, the Hectors and the Augustines of the world. That's why you have all the money you in the world. You want somebody yeah. who is a businessman who is sympathetic to sympathetic. animation. Yeah. Right. Ex Lucas, absolutely. What was the last thing you streamed on Netflix? Be real. Be honest. Don't lie. Uh, but show everybody your face. It was Hot Rod. It was Hot Rod, right? <laughs> no, it's not on Netflix anymore. Let's be real. Oh man! Human what centipede. Yeah, human centipede. Phase three or Netflix. whatever. Netflix. I think it was Bob's Burgers. <laughs> That's nice. real. Yeah, That's yeah, real, son. Yeah, That's yeah. real. I, I tend to <laughs> just throw on Bob's Burgers as well. I like yeah. your style, kid. Yeah. I watched. I just did a double feature. I did Coming to America on Ferris Bueller's Day Off. It's mm, great. Nice. I That's loved a good it. one. That's a good one. Yeah, I was justice. watching uh, Too Young to Die. That uh, it's a sort of like a docu series on uh, celebrities who died early. Oh, sad. The first oh. episode was Heath Ledger. Oh, so sad. That's why are you watching yeah, that? Yeah, that's on Netflix. God I damn. Watch it's why? And, the, and the interview, because I like seeing stuff like that. Ah. Um, so the first episode, I mean, no judgment, it's basically told by his dad. Oh, jeez. Oh, what? Oh. By Heath Ledger's dad? By Heath Ledger's yeah, dad. Yeah, now I kind of want to watch that. Yeah. And then Black Mirror too. I can't. Oh, Those Black shows Mirror's are so, so hard to get through. Oh, good. Oh, it's wow. hard to get through. Black they Mirror. Hit you. Black Mirror. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Cool. I Black was wrong. It's not Bob's Burgers. It's Black Mirror. Yeah. All right. Cheers to that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Want another one? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Is that so, number three? Huh? All right. Give huh? me that other empty one over there, Lucas. <laughs> you got a problem, bud. No. <laughs> the other empty one. <laughs> the other one. But I guess my final thoughts on this is... Um, <laughs> Take it in consideration. <laughs> do its best for both Disney and Netflix. Absolutely. Agreed. Uh, Absolutely. And then, you know, if Reed Hastings wants to take over CEO and he thinks that it's a it's a potential opportunity for him to then take his baby and expand it and do so many great things with yeah. it, then I'd say consider it. I know if Disney came up to me as I like, said, hey, I want to buy you, I'd be like, oh, maybe. Like, yeah. I wouldn't absolutely say no. Right. Like, what do I got to do? Yeah, you, you don't want to anger the mouse. Yeah, you don't want to anger the mouse because... Uh, you know, bad things happen. I'd be like, can I get a lifetime supply of Blu-rays, Disney? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's all <laughs> That's you'd it. ask for. That's odd. And they're like, and like Hector's a billion. So they're like, yeah, you, right get, right. you get, you get yeah. all the, yeah, you get all the Blu-rays, but Disney you don't parks. get free access to the Disney parks. Can I be parks? a part of no, Club 33? No, you, you ask for DVDs, Fuck. Hector. That's all you get. Shit. That's all you get. It's like when you make a wish with a bad genie. Mm -hmm. You have to be really explicit on like what you want. Your wish like the monkey's paw. Yeah, exactly. The monkey's paw. Yeah, it's good beer. It is good beer. So good. So right. that was, was that news? some well, real that good news, news stories okay, tonight, yeah. everybody. Oh. Hey, listen up, everybody. Here's our rotating segment. We can reuse last week's concept, and here's what we're going to do. We are going to ask you guys to donate how many bits? Fifty fifty dollars. Yeah, fifty, fifty dollars. I don't remember exactly how many bits that. Fifty dollars. If you guys donate fifty dollars, <laughs> should we doll cha hairs? Let's change it? Change let's it to it, doll let's hairs. Make it less. No, Hector, it's $50. 50, $50, 50 doll hairs. Doll hairs. Yeah. Doll hairs. $50. Doll hairs, dollars. <laughs> doll hairs man. And, we, and you guys can pick a, uh, a film, and we will pitch it as a TV show because the Inhumans is now moving from apparently a movie to a TV show, or at least we are hearing that we're getting a TV show of the Inhumans before we're getting yeah. a movie of the Inhumans. Same with Why the Last Man. Same with Why the Last Man. Mm -hmm. So you guys go ahead, and if you, if you wanted to, if you're in the conversation, you want to donate 50 bucks and pick any film – and uh, we will try to pitch it as a TV show, and more importantly, why it needs to be a TV show format over like a movie format. And uh, we'll just do that's it. That's our pitch session. For Claire's tonight. got fifty dollars hairs <laughs> for us. Thank you, Claire. <laughs> fifty dollars. Thank you, Claire. Hairs. Appreciate I got it. that. Uh, All right. All right. All right. <laughs> okay. So. Nice. So That's guys, the rotating stop segment. The trailers whenever whenever we do. Yeah. Pitch yeah. We're yeah. Wait. yeah. Well, okay. so we'll wait till after that trailer. Yes. If we get yeah. money in the middle of a uh, trailer? Sounds good. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, also, uh, if you want us to uh, watch trailers that we don't have planned for tonight, you can also donate for that. No, Are those right? the, those people can just suggest those in the chat. Really? I yeah, that's we decided. What we were going to... Oh, okay. It was... It yeah. was I was well, overpowered. I did not know. I was yeah, overpowered. We, all right. <laughs> okay. That's yeah, that was just looked at me like, what? 
That's an executive right, that's decision, that's not made by us. But also, okay. want to remind you guys, as usual, I'm, every I'm five subs, we're giving away Steam keys. Once we hit 10 subs, we're going to give away Watch Dogs 2. And if we raise 500 bucks we're, in this episode, we're going to give away Cinever's official t-shirt. Yeah, we'll, Send that motherfucker Where are we at? Where are we at so far? Do we know? Do we know, Lucas, Everybody? where we're at with subs? I believe we're about like four or five. Uh, yeah, somewhere between three and five. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. Not how many beers you've had tonight. Yeah. How many subs? Not the beers. How many subs should we have? Yeah. Oh, oh, uh, yeah, like 12. close like to one. Okay. <laughs> close to one. <laughs> Almost to one. Oh, I can feel it. Brother. Okay. Let's kick it off, All dude. right, everybody. All right. Let's do so this, this is a trailer that myself, Hector, and Augustine have seen. We did I a haven't. trailer reaction of it on Superhero Ooh. News, but Erica has not. Get ready yep. for tears, and dude. last okay. week, get ready we, last for week tears. we didn't get to watch it because everything went down. So I'm moving oh this sideways. God. I'm going to leave this uh -huh, here uh -huh. to protect myself a little bit from the tears that are going to be flying. And jingles, okay. my right, friend. Here we go. Wonder Woman official trailer. So oh, wait, wait. Pause that. Pause yay. that. Uh, who's that? Who's that? Dan Forty Fourth. 40th. 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 <laughs> All right, here's the pitch why Angry Birds should be a TV show rather than a movie. The well, it's movie. already an animated series. You know this, right? Yes. Well, what's okay. it, what should okay. it be like? Who should it be? What's the live on? action version going to be? It should be a live action movie starring Jason Sudeikis and Bill Hader uh -huh. as the bird and as the, <laughs> the pig. Bees. And the pig. And uh, Josh Gad should also star. It's a TV miniseries to to ramp up and amp up, uh, up leading up to Angry Birds 2. It is a Netflix uh, eight episode miniseries of comedy hijinks with your favorite Thank comedic you actors and chat dressed up in ridiculous Angry Birds costumes. Just saying the most ridiculous rated R shit because fuck it. A bunch of and penis jokes and a bunch fart of jokes. Dick jokes, and it's only for adults who want to tune in to watch Angry Birds get made fun of. And that's why it should be a TV show more than a movie. No way, dude. It needs to be an, it needs to be an Angry Birds origin story with a bunch of pissed off birds in cages. And Hector, you're going to be the, the person who works at the Lord bird store. Nice, uh, directed by Michael Bay? Yeah, it's got explosions. I say no to that. <laughs> <laughs> directed it's by Zach Eubank. It's got explosions oh, in it. Oh, boy. Oh, that's the only way it should happen if Zach directs oh, it. Oh, man. But Hector, uh, you have to be in this I, movie. I, I just like to point out, I love the fact that Hector actually pitched something that I was like, I thought he would have just said, go fuck this show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> I pitch what I would watch. I, I would say it's, gosh, I always forget what it's called, when it's cl cross-platform uh, sort of sort of interactions. I so think it's it would called cross-platform the... interactions. Is it? There's. A, I thought there was a specific marketing term for it, but it's where... Synergy. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> synergy. <laughs> synergy. They, synergy. Where, synergy. <laughs> it goes, where they, working yeah. whatever. Uh, where they, where, you know, they cross-promote with the game and the TV show, and it's like in order to get... Uh, extra story from the TV show. You got to play the game. So you sociology. unlock episodes yeah. as you play the game. Sociology. Exactly. Okay. Sociology Geek says, Henry, you should pitch that to Netflix ASAP. They might pay you serious cash yeah. <laughs> money for it. <laughs> Enough of that. Let's watch Wonder Woman. Hooray! <laughs> Hector's go. go. Hector's go. pissed Hector. off, y'all. Hector's pissed. Love Here we go. Hector's as angry as a bird. Oh. I used to want to save the world. Oh, sweet. This beautiful place. Ooh. Dark Slayer. Hey, welcome. Dark Slayer, welcome again. To the watch, watch, watch. You watch. I'll, I'll read. The more you see the great darkness within. Oh my god, no way. Oh. <gasps> I learned this the hard way. A long, long time ago. What is your mission? To stop the war. What war? The war to end all wars. Weapons far deadlier than you can ever imagine. The war can be ours. Wherever you are, you are in more danger than you think. I cannot stand by while innocent lives are lost. Be careful, Diana. Who is this woman? She's my um, secretary, sir. She's, she's a very good secretary. <laughs> That's a the 
It is our sacred duty to defend the world. And it's what I'm going to do. Damn, it's our best for this woman. Opposed to engaging in a bit of fisticuffs should the occasion arise. <laughs> oh, I love that. oh my god! Oh, that's great. Oh my god! Oh guys, yeah. you guys, yeah. this has to be good. I want this to be good so badly. I know. It needs to be. It yeah. needs to be good for my heart. The world needs this right now so badly. Here. But it's so oh. amazing seeing her on the big screen like this yeah. in her own movie i remember going up and my mom had like old wonder woman comics and stuff and it was and just like i'd never seen anything like that before in comics and and this is amazing and i, I just i want this to be good so badly i'm so scared i'm so why are you scared why are you scared DC erica has a crappy crappy hey, track hey, record hey, hey yeah hey let's be hopeful yeah this don't be thing, scared. This, don't be scared. This is, don't be scared. Why? Let's be hopeful. This is what makes me yeah? excited about Wonder Woman and why I am more hopeful about this movie than than other DC movies is Patty Jenkins. Yeah. yeah. Patty Jenkins she is approaching it, is approaching this movie with this is literally a quote. She says, "I want I want men and women of today Oh, 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 Bye. Nuclear Bye. Underdog Spy. Spy. Thank you, Thank Nuclear you so Spy. Welcome. Joining the Thumper family. Thank you very much. Subscribe with Twitch Prime. If you guys link up your Amazon Prime and your Twitch, mm -hmm. you, get a, you get a free subscription every month. Use that motherfucker. <laughs> um, but, but the thing, the beautiful thing that Patty Jenkins said that when she said this, I went, she gets it. She wants modern audiences, modern men, and particularly women to experience this movie the way that we exper that her generation experienced Superman the movie in 1978. There it is. Hope. I, there boom. It is. Yeah. Extreme, Extreme tribe. tribe. That's a good name. Thank you so much for joining the Thumper family. Uh, awesome. Hope and optimism. Uh, a romantic story that really works. Yeah. A story that really is about the characters and is supported by good action. Yeah. And and she knows and understands what the importance of this is. I mean, there's a direct mm -hmm. homage in this trailer to Superman the movie mm -hmm. where she stops the, the bullets with her bracelets in the alley. There's a scene in Superman the movie where Christopher Reeve catches a bullet that's about to hit yeah. Lois Lane yeah. and he pretends he faints. She knows how important this is and the fact that she references that movie and pays homage to it and then we get this trailer that to me is the most hopeful, positive, trailer and movie that DC has put it out so far it, it makes me it so excited so good but so don't I, burn us at the same time like David Ayer is a great director and I sure. feel like he did an amazing Suicide Squad and yeah. like Chris Nolan was attached to Superman and right. I I I don't know and it's how I don't know how much creative vision the directors get to uh, infuse into their own films right. with DC but at the same time I'm still I, 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 Forever optimist, and I believe yeah. I believe that this is going to be the one that good. breaks it, and it's going to be good. a Wonder oh, Woman. Oh, oh, oh. Five hundred bits, y'all. Hybrid by Vitae, Hybrid Vitae. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, how much you guys want that movie to be good is how much we want Concession Stand to come back. Damn. Oh, thank you, thank so you very sweet. much. You thank you so much. You did it. And, and uh, the, the power of your love brought us back. So yes. maybe the power of our love can make this real. I think yes. so. That's beautiful. Uh, 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 Hat Brian Bridget points out that... Uh, Twitch Prime does not auto renew, so yeah, you got to make sure you guys do it manually. Do it manually. Oh. Sure you guys do it manually. It I does did not, not auto renew. Yeah. Yeah. It does not auto renew. Okay. So that's why you, like a lot of people have been looking like, oh, all of a sudden subscription drops. You got to make sure you go back and you man manually uh, renew it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But to the point of Wonder Woman, I think 
DC, once Batman vs. Superman and Suicide Squad came out, they understood we're doing something wrong. We're not hitting the audience the way we need to be hitting them. Yeah. Um, because With a good film. Even if you... Critics aside. <laughs> put the critics aside for a second. Even audiences are split on these movies. Yep. Yeah. Audiences yep. are split. No matter how you look at it, they are split. Those movies make yeah. money. Batman yeah. vs. Superman, at the end of the day, should have easily crossed $1 billion. It has it characters not. named Batman it has and Superman in it. It has two most yeah. iconic characters in comic book History, yes. yes. They, they, Easily. They really don't movie. care. They did really well at the box office, and so they don't really care. I, I, think, they I care. think they do. Uh, I think they do care. They do care. They have to care. Yeah. They, they, they do. I'm sure people got fired, got moved around for not making a billion dollars for how much money was sunk into that film, and, and, and we're seeing it with the fact that Jeff Johns was moved into more of a creative position, yes. yeah. and he okay. might be the reason that Rick Famuyiwa was let go from Flash. It might have been Jeff Johns going, no, I know what this character is. Right. I know what these yeah. movies are. Did he have a say on Wonder Woman? Was it too late before he got that higher position well, of power? He co-wrote the script. He co-wrote the script for Wonder Hold Woman. Hold on, Apple Apple News just won. Congratulations. Apple News, congratulations. Oh, congratulations. Was that a stinky, awesome. I'm assuming? Yeah, I think so. Awesome. Do we have any more beers? Yeah, you want more beers? Yeah, I do. Little... I do. I'm going to have to pee, but after this beer. You're, oh, what? Um, Adam? Sure. You don't want it? But, yeah, I mean, I think I think Rick Famuyiwa le- leaving put up a little bit of a flag for people. Because they were hoping, because that happened after the Wonder Woman trailer. I think people were looking at it and going like, oh, good God, thank you, Lord, we're on track, it's going well. And then Rick Famuyiwa exits the flash and it's like, what's going on? What's happening? And then Junkie XL, right? But but he loved Deadpool. Oh, yeah, that was Deadpool, never mind. Do we have any napkins? Hector, what did you do? Party foul. Good point. Slurp it up, Zamboni boy. Dang it. Um, But, yeah, I mean, (laughs) I think at the end of the day, we're we're all hoping that this Wonder Woman movie is the brightest light of the DC universe so yeah. far. Yeah. Yeah. If it's bad, we riot. Divine yeah. Spartan asks, speculates riot. and asks if we're going to see Chris Pine die, either from old age or I something else. I don't think else. so. I mean, I, you know, we have no idea. We have no idea. We don't know anything uh, about the, the whole plot of it. And frankly, I would like to remain in the dark for right. all of this. Absolutely. I mean, we obviously know from the trailer, it takes place in World War I, mm-hmm. early 1900s. So he's probably dead. So yeah. he's, by the time we see Wonder Woman in, in our world, I personally hope... That the character is killed in battle, I think that would have more of an impact to Diana. Mm-hmm, I think mm-hmm, if the character mm-hmm. died of all age, of old age, it wouldn't be as strong as a, uh, of an impact because I have a feeling she obviously, at some point, either leaves Man's World or or just stays here well, and stays it, under it, the radar. It, it, yeah. It's tough because imagine if, for example, like the first Thor movie mm-hmm. took place in World War One or World War Two. And at the end of that movie, he was stuck on Asgard and literally couldn't come back to Earth. When he mm-hmm. did come back to Earth, if Natalie Portman was a super old woman the same way that like Peggy Carter was mm-hmm. it would be really sad and mm-hmm. poignant mm-hmm. the problem is is like the, I think that the, the challenge they face is you better explain and have a damn good reason for Wonder Woman being the hero that she is she's a very heroic person to decide to stop being a hero at yeah. the end of World mm-hmm. War One. Mm-hmm. it better mm-hmm. not be because Chris Pine died so she's sad about yeah. it the right, same way right. that people also, call like dark with Dark Knight. With, with that's what I was about Knight, to say. Right? It was <laughs> bullshit. That I, Bruce Quinn like, like, from Rachel Dodd. So he was eight Batman years. for like a year. And but then I think the difference stop. between Wonder Woman and and the scenario in The Dark Knight is what Wonder Woman experiences has a much greater impact than what Batman experiences. I get it. Right. It's well, World Batman, War One. Yeah. Batman is fighting when, crime, and Wonder Woman is in World War One. Sure, Fine. because yeah. uh, <laughs> even the, even the shot of her and Chris Pine walking across the bridge, she sees all these wounded soldiers. Yeah, so I think that has an emotional impact. Was the on her. worst. I mean, like uh, the methods of fighting that they had are now outlawed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. In, by the world. Mm-hmm. Inhumane. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Honestly, I don't. I I I think he will die. Well, obviously he's going to die because he's in World War One, oh, and you know, and the, yeah, and the way yeah. in which he dies. I like your idea, Adam, that him dying in battle, but I also want to see them develop more of a relationship. Like, yeah. Yeah. why is this going to weigh heavy on her? Is there going to be enough time to introduce her as a character and introduce why she is so deeply attached to this man? I mean, look at you know? what Captain America the first... This is this is essentially their first Avenger movie. Right. Mm-hmm. It takes place in World War One instead of mm-hmm. World War Two. By the end of this movie, it's, got it's going to be modern day framing day. devices. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So, right. So, I mean... Da, da. Hey! Drift, Thank ice, blood. Thank you very much for subscribe. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Ooh, that's not for family. But also, I mean, Peggy didn't exactly. didn't die until a couple of movies sure. in. Yeah. So, it's so know, sad. I, yeah, I, plus I, she had her own TV shows. Yeah. So it was like yeah. super. And impactful. I think I think the biggest difference between those two characters is is honestly just time. Right. Yeah. Right. For, right. For for Steve Trevor to be alive 
from 1917, which I think is where the movie, to now, it's literally impossible. Yeah, it, it is. Be. He's well, already he's already probably hundred years mid twenties to thirties by the time we get to World War One. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's literally impossible. He cannot be alive. Hey guys, yeah. guess what? Says Hyper what? RPG. What? Get, what? Is that ten? Yeah, Hyper RPG. What? What Are we is giving away something? Are we gonna? What's up, dog? What's up, dog? Chicken butt. Oh, chicken butt, baby. Be active, y'all. I don't see enough activeness in that chat. I'm, I'm active. more active doing this. I Come can on. still read what's going on. Yeah. You need to be more yeah. active. If yeah. we can read the I can chat room, there's a problem. The chat. Yeah. I can read it. I can read it. Whoa, what the fuck? Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, what? Good, Good luck to all. Chicken butts. Sniper powered RPG. Doll hairs active. See, I can still read it, you guys. You need to go faster. Faster, faster, faster. Oh, turtles. I like turtles. Okay, no, I can't. Go. Active, active, active. Oh, 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 super active. Oh, I deserve the most active. Oh, hello. Oh, turtles. So active. I was a good person. Go, 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 go. Watch it. Chicken butt, Oxy, Oxy. Three. Active, active. Yay. How are you? We are trying. Ha, ha, ha. Six. I want to go faster. Let's go faster. Let's go faster. Faster. Let's go faster. Let's go faster. I like chicken butt. Active. 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 I haven't seen this. You know what it, it must be great to be Batman. Batman, we love you. Thank you. I'm blushing super hard under the mask. Thanks, Batman. Pray God. Thanks, Batman. Thanks, Sander. Congratulations. You won. I can only imagine he's going home right now to party the night away, surrounded by friends and lady activewear models. Lady activewear. Yes. I'm home. I'm home. I'm home. He's so lonely. I deserve this. One. He's just Master like us. Bruce, your greatest fear is uh, snakes. No, it's clouds. No, it's being a part of a family again. No, now it's snake clouds because you put that idea in my head. Sir, you need to take responsibility for your life, and it starts by raising the young orphan you adopted. Whee! I thought I was being sarcastic. Hello, secret camera. We built this city. What? It's the bat cave. Gosh, oh my gosh. Look, it's the bat sub. Don't touch that. The bat zeppelin. Don't touch that either. It's the bat kayak. Do I get a costume? I love it, but his pants are just a little tight. I got an idea. It's better. I can only look you in the eyes right now. Hi, Batman. No way. Come catch your greatest enemy. Superman is my greatest enemy. Superman's not a bad guy. Then I'd say that I don't currently have a bad guy. I am fighting a few different people. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Hi, Barbara Gordon, new police commissioner. Around. It's my dream in the police force <laughs> to team up with Batman. <laughs> what? Wouldn't that be better? I hate everything you just said. <laughs> <laughs> Master Bill. Yes, we did it. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, why did you build this thing with only one seat? Uh, cause last I checked, I only had one butt. <laughs> Let's go defeat the Joker. Woo! We're going on a family trip. I can wear my costume too. Well, luckily for us, you left your costume back. In <laughs> oh, <laughs> nope, uh, under your clothes. That's <laughs> perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh my God. So good. So good. Oh so funny. Oh my god. Also, yeah. we forgot to remind people uh, with the last trailer. Make sure you guys are voting. Make sure you guys oh, are yeah, voting vote in the, the chat. chat room. We want to see what you guys that think of these trailers. Be the best DC film right? like, of all the last time. eight years. Uh, maybe. Also, really quick, we gotta give a huge shout to Land Sander 1236, who won a copy of Watch Dogs 2. Dang, I wanted that game. Uh, so I am, I am 100% seeing this in theaters. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. definitely about one. No, I have a one on that one. I have I have a buddy who yeah. uh, has seen some of the film, some of it, because he's kind of working on it, and he said that what with, with what he's seen, that it is so hilarious, and it's also chock full of DC Comics lore. Are we and talking about the same buddy? And there's a bunch yeah, of who, characters. Who read some stuff? Or just, yeah, 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 yeah okay. Characters All right, cool. Yeah. Yeah. All the yeah, villains no. and everything, yeah. like uh, and it, the, like, the Justice League's gonna be it. It's gonna be yeah. awesome. It's the way he was talking, it almost has everybody in the DC cool. universe That's in this great. movie. Oh, the thing with yeah. like me was like Lego Movie. I honestly was kind of late to the game. I waited yeah. a while before I went to see it, and I was kind of like, I don't know, dummy. Like, is it gonna dummy. be good? And then I started seeing dummy. the reviews, and then I found out that it was Lord and Miller, and I was like, I gotta go watch mm -hmm, this. Mm -hmm. I walked in the theater, I sat down, I had the best time. 
Best it's time. Such yeah, best. A good so good movie. movie. It's the best. If you have not seen Lego Movie, please watch it. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's uh, it's just the best time you'll have. I think kids would w- are gonna love this as much as they love Lego Movie. Absolutely. Found more. So good. So so awesome. So good. Yeah, I want to see. I want to see excited. what's his name do more Batman. Lorne. Um, Lorne. I want to do. Yeah. I want to see him do an actual live action yeah. Batman. Yeah. Claire 58 says, says the Lego oh, movie is a like huge a surprise to be honest. Oh, maybe like a reboot of Batman 66 or something. Something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, something. guys, the way, the way that we're going to get that is from that show Powerless. That's what yeah. I've been saying. Takes place in the DC yeah. universe. Have Will Arnett Hero. cameo as Hero. Batman. Uh, uh, have oh, have oh, Michael welcome. Sarah cameo uh, as the winner, Robin. The winner is Theater. 83, 36. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's got to really be Theater. I'm just hoping we're getting Channing Tatum as Superman. Yeah. And just Jonah, God Jonah God. Hill as Green Lantern and uh, uh, Colby Smulders as Wonder, Wonder Woman. I imagine it's the same cast. I'd be yeah. really surprised if they changed people. Guys, I have to go pee in Erica's house, and I don't care about missing this next trailer. So where do I go? Uh, <laughs> so it's by the door. Restroom's by the door. Yay. What door? There's 15 doors There's like a billion house. doors in the house. <laughs> yeah. 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 He's just going to pee in the closet. Right by the front door. Front door. You're going to pee in the closet. All right, here we go. Next trailer. Get ready to vote. Get ready to, to put vote. down pee pads yeah, yeah. for head guys. Pee-pee Don't forget pads. to vote. Yeah, just pee pee pads because right, Hector can't find anything. Lateral beauty. Is this going to be Wilson's bid for the Oscar this year? Uh, no, it wasn't that. Well, then why you decided to come in tonight? Um. Oh yeah, this one. I'm trying to fix my mind. Howard is a brilliant man, and he's not just a boss. He's a friend. He lost his child, and now he doesn't care if he loses everything else. This might be the strangest thing I have ever come across. He writes letters. Who are they to? Howard doesn't write letters to people. He writes to things. Time. Love. Death. Kids write letters to Santa Claus. It doesn't mean they're crazy. No, this is therapeutic. You don't think I'm crazy, but I'm having conversations. Death came first. She met me in the dog park. Charmed, I'm sure. So death is a her. Turns out death is an elderly white woman. Remember me? I'm time. You wrote me because you need me. Howard? Ask her. Go ahead, ask her if she can see me. He was sitting right here. And he just appeared, right? I'm love. And I'm the fabric of life. Something's starting to happen to you. Howard? I don't know what to do to bring you back. What if love, death, and time are trying to help you? You need to talk to them, Howard. Challenge them. Just engage. Love is the reason for everything. I felt you every day when she laughed. And you broke my heart. I was there in her love, but I'm also here now in your pain. He's reaching out to the cosmos for answers. Just be sure to notice the collateral beauty. It's the profound connection to everything. He accepts that. Maybe he gets to find his life again. You're not here to take me, are you? No, Howard. I'm here to ride the F train with you. Let's love tonight. Interesting. Uh, that's a really good cast. Hmm. I uh, it's it seems a bit schmaltzy. A little bit. Yeah. 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 Did you guys ever see a movie made in 1986 with Greg Kinnear called Dear God? No. No. So <clears throat> I, I haven't seen it in a long time, so I, I may be a little fuzz, fuzzy on these details. But he ended up working at a postal service, and the postal service would get letters to Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny. Right. Mm-hmm. A lot of them were addressed to God. Mm-hmm. And he was—he's not—he wasn't a religious guy at all. He kind of was just like, all right, weird people, whatever. Mm-hmm. Then he started to really notice the world around him and how people were so unique and how people were so different. Mm-hmm. And he started to open up these letters. And now, obviously, it's an Address illegal. To God it's, it's an illegal. Yeah, it's an okay. illegal act to yeah. you work for USPS. You, you cannot open anybody else's mm-hmm. mail. So he started opening these letters to God. He started to find out that a lot of these people were just very sad and lonely or were just asking for help. Yeah. Um, there was a guy who was trying to commit suicide. There was a, a mother who just wanted to provide um, food and, and shelter for her children. She was, mm-hmm. she was a, a housemaid just trying to you know make ends meet. But the beautiful thing about that movie, even though it's not like, to me it's not a great movie, but the message of that movie was so great where, where yeah. he took it upon himself. 
he he kind of relieved himself of all of, of his selfish self and he took it upon himself to try to fulfill these people's wishes he tried to save a guy from committing suicide he would when the when the woman would get hired uh to go to a house and provide a service you know like a house cleaning service him and like the the crew of from the post office would go and do it for them yeah and man. then leave her do, do you make the it money. Okay, good, good man, good man. <laughs> he peed somewhere. A, he yeah. peed somewhere. I told you, he peed in a closet. Um, so it was a, it's a really interesting concept of them kind of taking on the responsibility of helping other people, mm-hmm. whereas this kind of does the reverse. Yeah. It's other people taking on the responsibility to kind of help this guy, whatever his his mental, mental thing state is. is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so conceptually, I like the concept. It's a great cast. I, I like the trailer for the most part. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, it's a movie that delivers. I, I, I agree too family. because uh, I ooh, I wanted that concussion movie Netflix. to succeed so much. Yeah. But apparently it wasn't that great. It was to the point where all the reviews I saw were just kinda like the concussion. Concussion. Yeah, right, 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 right. And so that movie was Tell just kind of a mild hit. Tell the truth. And so th- that doesn't give me confidence that this movie will be They smell clean. We're good. They sm- no, I smell pee. I smell it from over here, Hector. <laughs> I, sm- I smells it but I, I i agree with you adam the concept is great i just wasn't sold by that trailer sure. yeah yeah the the trailer like with the music yeah, and, and you yeah. know the, the lighting and everything and the the stack cast make it seem kind of like one of those like love actually sort of style. yeah like very generic you know? safe kind of bland vanilla yeah, yeah. very vanilla type yeah but you know it's such an amazing cast though yeah and it's like yeah, a lot of those actors pick their projects pretty carefully so yeah i mean everybody's w- well accomplished yeah, that's that's on so, that cast you know i, I just i, mean, I feel like it's it's a very safe approach on a very touchy subject yeah kind of Me- mental health and yeah. i wonder if it's gonna be in the end just kind of like a big old metaphor that'd be interesting i think it is gonna be a big old metaphor yeah yep <clears throat> also, want to remind you, Hyper RPG is reminding us uh, if you guys tip fifty dollars or five thousand dollars or five thousand five thousand dollars five thousand dollars in bits, holy <laughs> shit, that's like a brand new car. Yeah, no. uh, name a movie, and we will pitch it as a TV show, and we'll tell you why we think that property would be better served as a TV show versus a movie. Yeah. And a lot, all that has to go tie in with a, uh, with the Inhumans. Mm-hmm. It was originally a movie, and now it's being a TV show. So, donate fifty dollars. Uh, or or five thousand or was it five thousand in bits? Yes, and like uh, that. give us bits. give us a name of a title, and we will try to pitch a TV show version. We already had one. Yeah, Angry mm-hmm. Birds. Lucas, what's your favorite Will Smith movie? Oh, dog. <laughs> oh man. All the. It's got to be Independence Day. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Why? Oh, you did not why? just shoot that green shit at me. <laughs> oh, Men in Black How one come? and two combined. Oh, Men in Black one could be up there. Yeah. 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 I would say I would say, yeah, Men in Black and and uh, Independence Day. Yeah, great. those are the those are the two. Those are the ones that solidified him as a megastar. What about Wild Wild West, y'all? Mm. Wild Wild, Wild West. West. As, as bad Wild as that Wild movie West. is, him and Kevin Klein are f- so fun together. Really, yeah, they're great. You throw in Salma Hayek, and I'm like, I'm kind of into this. It's yeah, great. I think that's why a lot of people went to see it. Yeah, but it wasn't that great. The and then that giant spider shows the up. The marketing and fun. for it, like they rolled oh. out the red carpet for the marketing. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys remember when they used to make uh, music videos for their movies? The Wild oh my Wild God, yeah. it was so, so that okay. Wild that Wild song West. will forever Wild live on, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is the best part of that film. I'm, I'm, I would venture to say that I'm glad that we had that movie because of the song. Uh, Wild Wild West? Wild yeah. Wild West. I would say that for Men in Black. Here come the men in that, black. That, that one right out. there. Well, but that was actually a good defend. movie, though. Right, I know, but still. They Independence had... Day didn't have a song, right? Because it was too... I don't think so. Uh, no. Think it was like yeah. Did you guys yeah. see Independence Day 2? No. 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 I did. <laughs> Oh, oh no! How bad Zach was and I it? watched it. Wait, the other was day. it? What was it? Rising resurgence. Resurgence. Oh, really? oh my god! It really it's, actually was. It's really weird because like millions of people die, but it's still got that Independence Day feel. Really? <laughs> action movie, and it's we like catastrophic. <laughs> Dang. That's wow. crazy. So almost Not everybody. I mean, a lot of people died in the first one too. Yeah, that's true. It was that's bad. True. It was like uh, at least half the planet died. Wow. Damn. Wow. Oh. Mildly intrigued to see how bad it is. But they were still making those corny, like, Independence Day jokes. (laughs) 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 To me, me, the movie, like, you lost me when you didn't get Will Smith to come back. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And to explain, like, on the website of, like, the viral marketing... Daniel Hillard crashed in an airplane and died. And I'm like, well, all right, well, stupid. That's it. Name. That's Dumb. how you're explaining Will Smith's yeah. deaths. Yeah. Bullshit. Yeah. Bullshit. I call bullshit. Boo. All right. Next trailer. Solace. 
Solus. 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 Oh wait, pause that. Pause that. Ooh! Perfect time. Man. Impossible girl. Oh boy, here Another we go. Another fifty bucks. Sorry oh, about Angry Birds, Hector. How about a bad DC movie of your choice? Ooh. Thank you, Impossible Girl. That's a good uh, one. Hector, 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 Hector. 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 Uh, let's go. Um, Jonah Hex. That's a good one. Oh my god! Now, yes. now on Legends Have of Tomorrow. Have you seen the Jonah Hex episode of Batman the Animated Series? It is so quality. I don't think so. It's quality. I maybe quality. I have. Yeah. Guys, pitch a Jonah Hex TV show. Why a Jonah Hex TV show would work better I don't know as the a movie. Yeah, I don't know the character either. Oh, I just know what time period he exists. Crap. In, but. All right. Um, that's you, Hector. This is all you. You can do no Jonah pressure. Hex and I'll pick no a pressure. No, I want to pick a different character. No pressure. Then. Can I pick one? Uh, yeah, please. Uh, I would pick the character of Steel, John Henry Oh, Henry's I was going to say, another great bad DC yeah, 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 Shaquille yeah, yeah. O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, Absolutely. why would that work better as a TV um, show? I, how would you pitch it? So the, I would put it on, as a TV show, and I would put it on uh, Netflix, obviously, because that's where everything gets seen. The reason why I would pick it as a TV show is because I don't have enough faith in DC in the DCU right now to do that character justice. I think they're so focused mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. Superman. I think on Netflix, you'd be able to tell a very human adult story of John Henry Irons, how he becomes Steel, and to still make it a part of the DCU, but very much let Steel own that small space. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I think that... Look at Luke Cage. I think what Luke Cage did was was amazing for Marvel. And I think that you could potentially have interactions with characters in the DCEU, whether it's like a Lois Lane or a Jimmy Olsen, have references to those characters, or not a Jimmy Olsen since he's dead, um, or address, address the bigger issues of like Lex Luthor, what's happening. But I think Steel could just be such a great character. Only, Netflix will get the budget. Only if Shaq reprises his role. <laughs> no. <laughs> Come no. on. Okay, no. LeBron James. Oh, hell no. This is not Damn Space it. Jam 2. Damn it. Come on. You guys, these are great ideas. Honestly, if, if I if I could pick, if I had a few choices, I would look at guys like David Oyelowo or... Endgame 609. Endgame 609, first of all, is that a reference to a wait, San where? Diego where, 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 zip code? Where? Because that's awesome if that is a San Diego what, area what, code. What, read it. Hector, but do you leave Superman yes. dead in this steel Netflix? Yes. Ooh. I would I would have it take place after Batman versus Superman in between the point Ooh, of Justice you're League. You're tingling my jingles Ooh. right now. And I would have him face characters. So the thing that I loved about the New 50s was John Henry Irons was very much kind of a a guy who worked in the military. Yeah. He was there when when oh, characters man. like Metallo were created. Yeah. I would use those moments. I would have to me it should start right after Man of Steel. Right after the Battle of, of Metropolis, yeah, you bring in you bring in John Corbin. He's a he's a um, an Air Force pilot for the military. He's being kind of reconstructed into this thing. We find out that he uh, volunteered himself for the Metallo project, and you've got John Henry Irons on the other side, like not really trusting where this thing whole thing is going, using all those plans to create Metallo to then create the steel uniform mm-hmm. to defend mm-hmm. humanity in Superman's absence, which like we it. later find out he dies. So I like it. I like it. Go with that. Am I going to have to go for the obvious answer and say Green Lantern? Go do it. Green Lantern. Yeah. Why, would, why would it be better as a Idris TV El- show? Is, it, with Idris Elba, he does TV stuff. Ooh, yeah. BBC, right. Luther. He, does he doesn't do that. I don't want John Stewart in You don't think so? Movie. I don't know. I don't know. It's, guys, they could do it on Netflix. They could do it on Netflix. I mean, that's oh. a big budget. I mean, I, budget. I, they'd have to have a real suit, I guess, that I would, might I, cut I, down mm-hmm, on mm-hmm, costs. But, mm-hmm. like, that's like... Green Lantern is once you go to space, like that's it's rough to do. It's new I, ground. I it's film. new ground. Guys. I would personally prefer Hal Jordan to get a Netflix series to explain his origin and then put John Stewart in the Justice League movie. You know what? That's a better idea. Word. Cancel that idea. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see Adam's idea. I mean, he just almost started out with Luther, but now he's a sure. list he big is. budget film. Yeah, he's so, doing I mean, uh, Dark Tower now, and I mean, I mean it's, it's hard. Mobius says you can't hard shoehorn Idris into El- into everything. We disagree. <laughs> I mean, everybody is. It's the hot yeah. thing to do right now. It's, it's, either do you, everything. it's either you get an actor from for Steel. You either get an actor of David Oyelowo yeah. or Idris Elba's talent, or you find an unknown actor, yeah. which I'd be fine with, too. Cat Real talk, Lucas. Uh, Carbaca, Carbaca's Catwoman, Catwoman, Catwoman TV show? Catwoman TV show. I, I, I would really like that because, you know, she doesn't have superpowers. Yeah. Right. You do, like, sort of mean streets of Gotham, and yeah, you, yeah. you know, cover it, like, you know, in the... Uh, uh, God, year one, Batman year mm-hmm. one, yes. Catwoman. Where Actually, she's that would be like, pretty awesome. Kind of pretty, sh- pretty shady, and mm-hmm. her she lives with her friend Holly. I'm surprised and you didn't go with Plastic Man, Hector. Yeah, it's uh, it wasn't yeah. a shitty movie yet. Ginger Peony oh, says Idris yeah, Elba started out with The Wire, yo, and then added that yo on there because Ginger Peony is street. Uh, <laughs> Lucas, real talk, would Hot Rod be better with Idris Elba? Real talk. 
Uh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm thinking Idris Elba casted as uh, Kevin. It's Kevin. Yeah, yeah <laughs> Kevin. That would be good. Camera. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Plus, I I don't. I'm I'm unfortunately missed, my name's uh, Kevin. Hector's pitch. And for... I like to party. <laughs> he didn't pitch anything yet. Yeah, he didn't. No, that's it. We're done. Uh, we got all the best pitches you guys. We got. I'm gonna kill this. Steel yeah. fucking Green Lantern fucking Catwoman fucking Hot Rod done. Yeah. Great. Let's right, watch this next trailer. For trailer. Here it is. Holy mother of God. All right. Looks like a match. Three murders. Seven? Identical ammo. I need to go see him. And uh, and, uh, it's with all due respect. I don't hold an ounce of confidence in the paranormal as a few. No, no problem at all. I feel the same about shrinks. After only one thing, your money. You two are going to make a hell of a team. Can I touch her? Who's got a Harry Potter one? Joe. Joe, take a look at this. 416 Bible verse. That's the time. 416 precisely. He knew that we would arrive at the apartment at exactly 416 because he knows everything. You see? Oh. He's just like me. He sees things. Only he's better. A whole lot better. Let's go! Go, go, go! The whole thing's a trap and we're walking right into it. Come on, get it! He's got to talk to me. He's way ahead of us. And we're doing exactly what he wants us to do. He's way beyond me. And I can't stop him. Which begs a more important question. Is it really worth stopping? <laughs> Something bad is going to happen. Something She's all really both. bad. Something uh, bad. Ginger Peony says that hair, though. <laughs> yeah. I will never see this movie. Like, I will never see it. Uh, I don't think I'll watch it either. Um... It seems like it was a something that was a great script, which is why Anthony Hopkins, right. Jeffrey Colin Dean Farrell. Morgan, and Colin, Colin Farrell, Farrell signed up for it. Mm-hmm. Abby Cornish. Yeah. However, it was in the not the best capable hands. Yeah. Because it looked like a crappy TV movie. Yeah. Uh, I, shots weren't that impressive. I think the trailer would have been much more successful if they would have actually just not put Colin Farrell in it at yeah, all. Yeah, if they had left him yeah. in a mystery. Give yeah, us a little absolutely. mystery. Keep it a mystery. Keep it a mystery. They just doomsdayed him. It's a, it's an interesting <laughs> concept of what they're trying to play out. I don't know if it's literally what it's saying it is or if we're going to go into the movie and find out that it's something different, but it's a great cast. I, I, I love would the cast. Like to, I would like to read some reviews of this yeah. because yeah. I, I'd like to see what are the parts that seems like there's so many parts that work in there thrown mm-hmm. together, but somehow yeah. it doesn't in the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's really intriguing. I, mean, uh, I like, and, I like and, crime thrillers. This could be the next seven. NZ Penzi yeah, said, God, maybe. that looks so like normal. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. Nailed it. It just very generic. It had that kind of like, what is it? Uh, Tr- true, uh, no, uh, true the, detective, true yeah, true detective, yeah. or wire you know, type. or a, like a criminal mind, yeah, sort of yeah, yeah, like yeah. filter on it. Credit Nation yeah. 3000 says they really need to sell it though, showing Colin Farrell. You've got three other great actors to sell, yeah, this there's you a lot of talent. You don't, you don't need it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus, Abby Cornish, you guys. Yeah. From, <laughs> from good argument. Well, plus, I mean, the thing is, like, you know, nowadays actors very, very rarely, very rarely, almost never sell movies anymore. Yeah. Tom Cruise is one of those last real movie uh, stars. He, he, he was the last, but even they've said like Jennifer Lawrence doesn't mm. put right. butts in I mean, seats. even guys like Tom Hanks and Tom Hanks, yeah. one it's, of the best actors it's, ever. It's not that they sell seat sell sell tickets. It's that uh, their name attached to films right. helps get them picked up by studios because studios right, right, right. still think that actors put butts right. in mm-hmm. seats, mm-hmm. Do, despite don't. the statistics that say otherwise. I mean, who's gonna who? If you're looking at those actors. Out of all those actors, who's the actor who everyone's going to go like, ooh, the Rock. it's Anthony Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins. You know the, I mean? Ro- <laughs> the Rock. Sir yeah. Anthony He's Hopkins. Sexiest He's man alive. Just, yeah, Sir Dwayne The Rock. So, He's got so, so, so well deserved. Ooh, Solace has a 26% Oh, I didn't know you had a Tomatoes, oh, Greg yeah. Brent's come. Well, there you yeah, go. There you go. Greg Brent's crumb says... <laughs> Boom. 26%. Yeah. Yikes. All right, here we go. Um, Speaking of Idris... Hi kids. You like so I love you. She has a vote in chat. Wait, does he got a uh, American accent? No. 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 Okay. It's time to meet 
the man of the moment, former England rugby captain, a true hero, Matt Moore. Pass, 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 pass. Ooh, yeah. Here to an awesome show. What about Hal's Moving Castle as a TV oh. show? Oh. Thank you, you know? Thank okay. you very much. So, so the thing is uh, about Studio Ghibli films is that there's a lot of very, very expensive, very excruciating animation yeah. and like even like painting they wouldn't even have the budget for one of the backdrops for the big set pieces unfortunately um but in a dream world if they could <laughs> you okay there lucas there's a mouse crawling on the floor <laughs> there's a lucas crawling around here somewhere uh so uh but in an in a dream world i believe that um if if they could do it somehow that it should be um, set after the events of the TV uh, of the movie, where you know there's peace ostensibly uh, between you know between the Warring Kingdoms and uh, Sophie and Howell have gotten together, um, and it's like them going around in the ca- in the in the moving castle, uh, sort of like doing encountering uh, different yeah, adventures, encountering different adventures, you know, saving yeah, exploring the world, saving more people because it's a very very rich world. Mm-hmm. So to explore it uh, on a weekly basis would be fantastic. Uh, animation's tricky like that, though. I I think they should do it CG, Bless you. CG or or even uh, live action if they were to do that. Mm, I know, I know, I know, because the art style lends itself so much to the world. Yeah. But at the same time, if somebody comes up with a kick-ass story, I'd be down to see that in in live action or even CG animation. So it's not as expensive as two D. I, I don't know the CG like in order to get it. I mean, I, it's just not possible, I don't think. I think it's possible. I think, like, the the richness of uh, Studio Ghibli's storytelling is very much tied to the animation style and mm-hmm. the richness of the storytelling. I think it's possible. There's some stuff you could do in these CG programs to get some, mm-hmm. some cool looks. Mm-hmm. It won't be exactly like the animated series, mm-hmm. but it'll, 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 it'll have its own little magic. I've never seen Howl's Moon Castle. Damn you, so... Adam. Oops. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oops. Um, I, I'm a lot of you guys may not know this, but I'm kind of the guy. I don't I don't avoid animated movies at all. Yes, right? you do. You hate them. I don't yeah. avoid, and it them. hurts my heart, like Adam. Yeah. Look, man, I'm going it to see Moana on soul. Saturday. I'm very excited about oh, that. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, Did you get a confirmation email? No, but I usually do, so I'm hoping I do. All right. Pretty cocky. Um, um but I, I think animation is a is a beautiful way of uh, telling stories. There's just a lot of movies that really slipped under the radar that I never yeah. knew of. Yeah, it's um, just like. Me with all the classic movies that you guys talk about and yeah. I miss out on. I was watching cartoons while you were watching right. all those other movies. Yeah. I'll buy you all those movies, Adam. They're great. But don't feel bad. I haven't seen Howl's Moving Castle yet either. Oh, you know, okay. that's a classic. It's a, it's, a, seen, uh, it's a really, really good one. Really good one. I've, I've seen a lot of great Studio Ghibli. I think my favorite still might be Poco Rosso. I love Princess Mononoke. It's amazing. But I got to watch the rest of them. And uh, yeah, mm-hmm, House mm-hmm, looks really mm-hmm. good. But I really like both of your guys' pitch, pitches. I mean, I would I would be down for either of those. So that'd be cool. Yeah. yeah. See, even one Claire sec, says, sec, please watch it. Uh, you have to what? do what Claire says. We, uh, we, we are giving away... At 50 oh. followers, we're giving away a Steam key. We're only 10 away, I think. Wait, oh, really? Oh, snap. Oh. Steam key at 50 followers? Oh. 40 out of 50. Only 10 more? It's free to follow. Just follow. Yeah. It's free to follow. Just follow. You know, yeah. when we go if live, baby. Yeah. already, please. Five or days like, a week. tweet it out or tell your friends and tell them to just follow so that we can do a giveaway. Yeah. If you're watching and you're not following, <laughs> I mean, what, the what are you are doing? What the fuck is going on? <laughs> But totally, yeah. If you follow, I mean, you just get updates on when we go, when Hyper RPG goes live. There is live yeah. content every single yeah. day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. guarantee you will find one to three shows that you like on here enough that you will want to subscribe because mm-hmm. there is a lot of good stuff on yeah. there. Mobius says I have maximum followed. Okay. Maximum. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. Boom! Yay! There you go. Oh. There you go. Pick me Puff the Magic Dragon. I love your name, by the way. It's a. Uh... Uh, combination of uh, oh, yeah. there we go. There now we we're cuckoo Crisco, okay. baby. Yeah, like awesome. We need some more guys, and then yeah, we'll give yeah. away. Let's what are we giving away it. again, Lucas? Steam a Steam key. Steam key. Steam key. Hey, there we go. Well done, we're here. Okay, we're so here every Tuesday. Seven. Yeah. We're here seven, every seven, Tuesday seven. at seven thirty. There is an entire slate of shows on Hyper RPG. So yeah, for real. And at least you get to talk to us and have a good time. Exactly. Proud subs and Dependy. Thank you. Chaotic Looney says this channel has so many great shows. Yes, absolutely. Thank you very much. See. There you go. There yeah. you go. That's Hyper Opera G, baby. All right. All right. Let's watch go. this trailer. Let's finish this trailer. Oh, yeah. He's so handsome. Bye, Daddy. Bye, Daddy. Bye, Daddy. Bye, Daddy. Bye, Daddy.
Daddy. <laughs> Daddy, where are you going? Where are you going, Daddy? Why are you going with such an asshole? Mama! The man of the moment, former England rugby captain, a true hero, Max Moore. I say it takes a matter of time. A thousand Alex is going to be a man on fire. Shy. Yeah, nothing bad is going to happen to this guy. I'm sorry. I made a mistake. You made more than one. For your love, I will go far. I want to be wherever you are. I know I'm coming back for you. I stopped playing. I don't know what had left. It was you and my kids. I miss you. You just treat everything like it's a match you can't lose. Without our passion, it's very hard for us to find our place in the world. Do you take a good look in the mirror? Stop trying to control me! You were a legend, mate. Sort yourself out. I can't be a legend, so I'm not dead yet. I just wish I didn't have to sneak around. She was sneaking around too. Zero. Damn! album movie that we saw a trailer. I don't even remember the name of the movie. It did not interest me, but this looks I mean that was this. Gemma, uh, I have to call Gemma bullshit Arnold on the too. one-handed shotgun shot. Uh <laughs> that would not have worked hey, at all. If Arnold can make it work yeah, and not to judgment day. Oh no. No, that's uh, even more kickback. Uh, Do you know how go bad one of those shotgun kicks back? <laughs> yeah. But Idris Elba is very strong. I'm going to go two. I'm going to go rent the hell out of that because I really like that actress Gemma Ayrton, I think is her name. Ayrton, yeah. Ayrton. She was in Quantum of Solace, yeah. the shittiest of the Strawberry new Daniel Fields. Craig. Agent Strawberry Fields. Agent oh. Fields. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I think she's fantastic. And, of course, Idris Elba. And it's it, it looked Eesh. so, so sad. With But I love the, the, the log line, searing performances. I yeah, love that. Yeah. I'm definitely going to rent that. That's going to be awesome. That looks so rough. I know. <laughs> Thanks, Mobius. It's my girly arms. That's why. I can't shoot shotguns one-handed. <laughs> <laughs> Do you even lift, bro? No, I obviously. Do you even shotgun one-handed, bro? You guys, so you guys shotgun one-handed? <laughs> Erica, you shotgun one-handed? Yeah. Damn. I, I need to work out. Yeah. I need to hit the gym. Um, th- it seems like the chat room is uh, voting two on this one. It seems like they're all right. going to yeah, rent Yeah, I, I don't one. think I'm going to run out and see it in theaters unless it's like a performance that I need to see. Uh I feel like they might. Pro- uh, this could net him an o- Oscar nom, maybe depending on reviews. And so what? We'll mm-hmm. get. We'll get a. What? What, what was Keanu says Daniel Craig Bond is the worst Bond. Oh. Yeah. Them's fighting words. Look, I'm not even gonna say anything. I'm gonna leave Eric. I'm gonna let Erica finish her point, but I'll just do this. <laughs> uh, so you know where I stand. Yeah, I don't know. We might get the screeners for this one, and I'm am interested oh, to see. Yeah. And I want to see. I want to see reviews. Yeah, basically that's yeah. I'm waiting. If these reviews are killer, I'll go out of my yeah. way to watch it. I like Gemma Arterton. I saw her in uh, Hansel and Gretel, and I saw her in the movie yeah. with Jake Gyllenhaal, uh, per- uh, Prince of Persia. Oh yeah, and she right. was also in Clash of the Titans. And I think she was in oh, she's in she's whatever she's in whatever of the Titans. That's the thing. For her, I think she's a very capable actor. Yeah, this is the first movie, and I, I haven't seen her in a lot of trailers for a lot of stuff lately. This is a movie that I that I see her and I'm like, oh great, she's getting a role that I think. We've seen little hints and pieces of her in other media, movies. A media That's role. Exactly. A meaty, important role that I think could be really, really good for her career. <laughs> I agree with Claire58. Austin Powers is the best Bond. Let's be she, real. She was yep. in the original Claire. Mummy? No, no. He's thinking of Rachel Weisz. Yeah. What, but was Gemma in the Mummy? Like, there may have, uh, was there any other roles that she of. No. I just watched. That might be right. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> whatever. Okay, cool. I think so. Hector, you have Google. All right, guys. All right. Real Next quick, oh, Live okay. by Night, Ben Affleck, oh. directorial film oh, from Warner okay. Brothers. All right. I'm hearing good things about it. Let's see what you got, Don't baby. let us wait, down, wait, Batfleck. Wait, directorial what? No, it's, it's just, just another di- directorial with Brothers. Oh, effort, okay. I guess okay. we could yeah, say. The, the, debut the effort. next debut. chapter of the Ben Affleck yes. dir- directorial We've Let, have, We have uh, many beers in us. Series. Quite a few. Okay. All right, here series we go. Is, it already looks like Batman. <laughs> just kidding. That's a good shot. That's a good shot. Maybe it's true. He's looking skinny right there. We all find ourselves in lives we didn't expect. That's a good shot. But what I learned was... Bloody nose. 
Powerful men don't have to be cruel. I got one guaranteed life. I was gonna live it. I had a plan. You said you This movie is beautiful. Oh my god. Do you think that we got where we are by letting some inbreds muscle us? <laughs> what are you saying? Hector? I can't even hear what you're saying. You're making a fatal miscalculation. We're clerks and bankers and police officers and we even got a judge. And if you're dumb enough to fight us, I'm gonna rain bloody hellfire down on you. Oh. That's all you love. So you're threatening me with people who are more powerful than you? Exactly. So what am I talking to you for? <laughs> Yeah, you are. Holy <laughs> shit, that looks cool. Wow. Uh, that was a very well cut trailer. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, like the music and a lot of the cinematography takes some time and a lot of the cinematography. Yeah, and the whole style. And... Yeah, it looks like a very beautiful period piece. I think when we watched it before, we had the concern that it feels a little bit like a bunch of actors playing. Uh, you Gangster. know, gangsters, yeah. Yeah, like yeah, playing yeah. dress up yeah, as gangsters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I I don't know what it is about that. Uh, this was a better cut trailer. Do you still generic? feel that or no? I I don't know. Like I really liked this trailer a lot, and it looks really interesting. But uh, I I don't know that that first trailer kind of had looks, that feeling. That looks badass. Yeah, to that me. looks really like, good. I'm, I'm not a fan of the gangster genre. Mm -hmm. Like I still haven't oh, even seen the I Godfather films. Right? Okay, we're kidnapping your younger brother to watch all the Marvel <laughs> movies. And we're kidnapping you to watch Godfather, Godfather 1 and 2 and But that's because I'm not a huge fan of the genre sure. in oh. general. God, and so, this, so this movie, though, looks pretty badass. Thanks, Thanks for the reason. Looks cool. One thing you got to know, Augustine, is that the reason that there e even is a, a gangster genre is because, is because of, Godfather. of Godfather. I know. I understand and it's like the importance the of best, those movies. And you could argue that The Godfather is the best film of all time. Right. That's I, how and, I've, and I've heard that I mean, so much. I mean, the gangster genre was very popular like in the 40s sure, and sure, everything. Sure, sure, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but the, modern, the reason yeah. we have modern gangsters. Uh, Let's unite Angel Mitsu, non-Godfather watchers. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, it's so uh, But I understand the importance of that movie and I understand that it started a whole, like, thing in yeah. cinema and it was beautifully and everything i understand it i just haven't seen it yet but i'm just not a fan of the genre in general what do you think about that this being said this trailer was badass and i awesome. want to see this movie nice. hey guess what nice. you're a fan of the genre <laughs> <laughs> i don't i can't call myself a fan though because i haven't seen the well movie i think okay. the interesting thing about the kind of like the, the gangster genre is it can feel very hollywood <clears throat> yes like you, it can feel like it's yeah. actors putting on costumes yeah. and playing these roles yeah or if it's a movie like the godfather you you walk into it and it completely just you just are absorbed into the movie. Yeah. You're absorbed into it so much that you're just you're you're sitting there just staring and listening to what the characters are saying, right. what actions they're taking, right. what it's, it looks like, what it sounds because like. Because it's engaging. Yes. Because what they're saying is so important and the actors mm -hmm. have to sell it. Yeah. I understand it's mostly it. Mostly about the drama. It's a family drama. Yes. Right. Totally. Right. It's, so star, people, it's Star Wars in our modern world. So many people in the chat are saying, I also have not seen it. I think we have to do a watch along with the Godfather film. Probably. Yeah, it's like, oh, oh, only yeah. oh, 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 really? Thank you so much. go. Last suggestion. I mean, Christopher, Christopher Nolan, Nolan Batman. Oh. Hashtag Thumper Pride. Wow. Wow. Thank, thank, thank you very girl. much. Ah. If you guys are unaware of what we're doing, uh, whenever you donate fifty dollars, you guys can suggest a movie that you think would be better suited for a TV show, and we'll pitch you why we think it's better suited for TV. Mm -hmm. Christopher Nolan's Batman. Oof. Well, I mean, like, okay, th that's weird because if you're going to tell me Christopher Nolan's Batman, I feel like, do you want to live in an alternate reality where those films didn't exist and rather we're watching a TV show of those stories? Because I'll pitch I that. Or is the I, thing more like just Batman in general, like no. it should work as a TV show? Batman Chris Nolan's universe no, Chris Nolan. as a show. Yeah. 
Okay, well, well, if you're gonna do that, but the movies already existed. I mean, yeah. Really then the show would be Gen- Joseph Gordon-Levitt as Robin or Batman yeah. or Nightwing mm-hmm. or whatever the, identity he takes on, which would be so sick. It would be dope. Right. The right. problem, dope. the problem with with Christopher Nolan's universe is that, like, it doesn't. The timeline doesn't really hold up under scrutiny, or not. Not hold. Doesn't not hold up. It's just it's. Uh, like how long was he actually Batman for? It right. feels like he was only he was only Batman for like two years, Once. and then stopped, and yeah. then came back and at the end, later, and then retired. Yep. Like you know, it'd be uh, awesome if you if you deconstructed those films and made Batman Begins a season of television, mm-hmm. thirteen mm-hmm. episodes yeah. of a story, because it's like holy shit, that would be made. That's basically Arrow season one. Like they're trying to do Batman Begins. Mm-hmm. Season two would then be The Dark Knight, which is like let's spend a whole season where Batman over the course of a few weeks or months is dealing with this threat of the Joker, which would be kind of amazing. Mm -hmm. And then The Dark Knight Mm -hmm. Rises could be a season or two of like he's coming out of retirement and he has to take on Bane and the League of the Shadows or whatever the so hell like you could do that movies as the skeletons of seasons well you could do that or what Eric is saying yeah and the thing is is that I, I feel like they started building the idea of the Bat family and then completely abandoned it at the yeah. end because they were like oh he needs to pretend to be dead but what right. he needs to do is he needs to come back to Gotham mm. post Dark Knight That's Rises very true. Oh, and, yeah. and yeah he needs to come back and build the Bat family yeah I got you, I got yeah. something okay go Ahead. I I would keep the original Nolan movies in content in in continuity like they happen. In cinematic. Got it. They happen. Got it. But what I would do between Batman Begins and The Dark Knight, I would build a show. This is a show that I probably would build on Fox in place of Gotham. Yeah, please. Cancel. I would call it Citizens for Batman. That's a terrible name, but keep going. Hang on, <laughs> hang on. You'll know where I'm going with this. It's called Citizens for Batman, and it's about ordinary citizens and or cops who assume the identity of Batman yeah. and create. Uh, they're basically the copycats that we see at the beginning of The Dark Knight. Yeah, that's sad. Use what those. What makes you so different? Yeah. I'm not wearing Occupy. Yeah, I'm not wearing Occupy. Like, those guys are like, like really pathetic, so I think yeah. sure. there should be the a idea. show. Yeah. yeah. But it would be awesome if it was like a rogue SWAT team on Gotham, on GCPD, who goes in and they go into these missions or these scenarios. They're cops, but they dress up as Batman and to just kind of continue to inspire that hope. Because yeah, right, right now, right, right, at the right. end of Batman Begins, people still don't know who Batman is. People just look at him as a vigilante. They think mm-hmm. some, some people mm-hmm. think he's a criminal. And I think you use these characters to kind of build up the fact that Batman is a little bit of inspiration, yeah. a little bit of hope for Gotham City. Yeah. And you can start to sprinkle in things like Salvatore Moroni and the yeah. and the uh, and the Falcone for crime the family. Knight. I think yeah, a yeah. good a good name for it might be like Legends of the Dark Knight sure. because it's yeah. like the idea he's he's totally. just kind of this legend, so you never actually see him in the Fuck, show. That's good. And then you can tie in things Fuck. like Gotham Central ideas, like like uh, like Gotham Central. I think would be really cool. Mm-hmm. Where you oh my God. use other cops you who then what like, the show Gotham should have been exactly. Yep. You use yeah, other yeah. cops yeah. to go against those cops, but yep. they don't know that they're yeah. cops. It, there, there's like a whole web of things Crazy. that you can do with it. Tell me that wasn't worth fifty dollars. Yeah, dare no. you. <laughs> One I problem that like, we need to tackle, though, Joker, Heath Ledger. Right. What do you do but with yeah. that? I think I think you, you interweave that? him throughout. Kind of like if you're able to bring in, him in closer to the timeline of the Dark Knight, he starts to pick I, these guys off. I I think the right. thing is too, like also you know it's like they only hint at him in the end of the first one, and then like and then he suddenly meets right. him in the sure, second right. one. I think that. Like if he hasn't made an appearance, he hasn't made an appearance yet. People don't know who he is, so that's fine. Um, but also, remember how in Batman Beyond, how they have the Joker squad, yeah, the Joker totally. gang, you know? Totally. And so it's like kind of copycats yeah. again. The the idea. Of I mean, look at Joker. Even at the beginning of the movie, he goes into these heists. He goes in these scenarios, but he disguises himself, yeah. so nobody even knows that he is yeah. the Joker. Um, plus, yeah. you can have other characters like yeah. Scarecrow, who kind of. They escaped and Batman Begins. They can go, you have Victor Zaz. There's plenty of characters yeah. that get introduced. Yeah, there's lots of other characters. Yeah. Red Hops asks, if Nolan wanted to do another Batman right now, would DC let him? No, probably not. No, no. He wouldn't because, do it because it would mean people yeah, like it, it would mean yeah. people like Zack Snyder and Ben Affleck, who are very powerful in Hollywood, would be like undercut. Yeah. And so like Warner Brothers slash DC wouldn't let Christopher Nolan just like yeah. do like yeah. like even if you wanted to do like a Catwoman spinoff with Anne Hathaway, where it's like, oh, right. it's part four of my story. They wouldn't let him. They'd be like, no, no. that's done. It's done. Uh, it's done. Did we already see this last week? Or No, this is the new trailer. We okay, saw one, one oh, already. Okay. Trailer two. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be sad. That Let's was back it. in the day when Here we, we saw go. this one. Great. Okay. It's a long intro. All right. There's a link to get tickets. Hey. I haven't seen you in your uniform for a while. Yeah, that was uh, on purpose. Mm, kind of turns me on. 
Why do they zoom into him, him getting the coffee? That was weird. <laughs> there he is, General <laughs> Ben. Wow. Those votes in this thing. Those votes in there, man. 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 Those votes in there, Behaving yourself? And I love Michelle Monaghan. Yeah. Oh, she's the best. God damn it. Yeah. Peter Berg. Peter Berg's a great director. We've got to decide who's running this, and we have to decide quickly. Is that Joe Morton? It's terrorism. We'll take it. Let's get an evidence for it started right over there. Clock is ticking. The world is watching. The suspect seen on the surveillance cameras. Two bombers. We gotta find these guys before they do this to someone else. We can't have our citizens on the streets with all these threats. Every inch of this city is getting searched. We're shutting it down. A taxi picked up a guy matching a White House description. Could be he's on his way to New York. Are there more bombs? Is that Melissa Benoist? Was it? Yeah. Are there more bombs? I want a lawyer. It is. Whoa. No, I have rights. You ain't got shit, sweetheart. <laughs> what I saw today, good versus evil. Love versus hate. There's only one weapon you have to fight back with. It's love. We wrap our arms around each other. I don't think there's any way that they can ever win. good man i'm curious about that melissa benoit scene mm -hmm. she's a white actress playing a white woman wearing a hijab yeah she's a muslim woman and I then am. she you had a muslim interrogator saying you ain't got shit and i'm like is this the time in the country to be uh, that somebody, i read that crash scene? gaming yeah. i think said this does not fit in with the current political landscape i mean i 100 percent agree and we asked a couple of people in chat uh who are from Boston sure. and you know new people mm -hmm. and involved sure. in Claire said, 58 nope. said they no they said no nope. and uh i just it's way too soon and this is not i mean we don't know what the narrative of the film is going to be what the message right, of the right. film is going to be it yeah, seemed it, it really me. it really seemed like the trailer showing the heroism that it was no i understand that white people are muslims too but i'm saying that and it's I'm not still sure if she might be like a part of like an actual mm -hmm. person right but the, the fact story. that the trailer really like slow motioned down to yeah. that scene and like really highlighted that i'm like yeah. i'm like what are we doing with that scene guys i don't i don't, I, mm. I, I i i totally understand if it's part yeah. of the story that they're telling if it's part of history i'm not that familiar with what happened with the boston bombing yeah. with the boston marathon like i want to see this film and i want to know but says better that trailer. just that seemed like uh, interesting and off-putting. As far as the rest of the trailer, the way that the film was shot was very interesting. I think the cast is stellar all across the board. I like the way that the camera was moving around. Everybody to create that sense of heightened, like we got to get it's moving like on this thing. It's like cinema verite. Great. And I'm I, into it. I don't know. I'm not... I, I feel like it was a mistake to have made Somebody it says so. it, it, it looks like a witch hunt. It's like that's the thing you want to avoid. In, right. in, in, a, in a world where Donald Trump is asking for a ban on Muslim people, to then really slow motion on that scene, I'm like, ah, don't you guys want to not do that? Yeah, this yep. is real bad. It's, I mean, this I, is, I, this I wouldn't coming... be surprised if they went back and re-edited this film, though. Yeah, to I try agree. and adjust for the political climate. This, but I this is yeah. coming at a time where this movie feels ultra patriotic. Sure. It's very rah rah America. Let's rally behind it. When fifty percent of the nation does not feel very patriotic very, it's very point. nationalistic. It's very, it's very nationalistic. Like oh. I'm not very comfortable with the militarization of police and this. They're like glorifying yeah. it. Seems like in this movie, there's a lot of things that this movie's coming out at just the wrong time. Basically, it it shouldn't be coming out at this point. I and I think they they've noticed it. I have a feeling that I and I hope that you're right that they re-edited it here, to be here, a little bit different. Well Here's an interesting comment. Fantmox says that you're familiar with it. A bomb from a teen went off, 
and worse things have happened in the world, worse things have happened throughout history. The first part of that sentence, I wonder if that scene was supposed to be showcasing that to target Muslim people is racist, it's wrong, it's xenophobic. And I wonder if that maybe that's what the scene was supposed to be trying to show mm -hmm. in the trailer. I don't I feel like it, I feel like it didn't come out across that way. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe that's what the message of the film might be. Again, I'm not that familiar with this actual historical event that happened right, a few right, years right. ago. I want to be more aware. I think Peter Berg is a great director and I want to see this film, but that scene was really yeah. like ill time and to to welch Smirt says like i'm from boston and just, this just seems like a terrible right. idea just like claire saying it's horrible yeah. timing not a good way to tell the story i don't think if it was a documentary with the survivors it would be better i maybe that's a better idea it's drama dramatizing it like this maybe it was not the best i, I think there's a place and there's a time and place for documentaries and there's also something very powerful about like a dramatic recreation you know i think that when we think about something even as like historically important, unimportant as the Titanic. We think mm -hmm. about James Cameron's film, mm -hmm. and there's so many things that that film did right about that historical event that it's right. like, great. At least yeah. we have that stored well, away. One yeah. of the things that, that it did right was it waited like 100 years before yeah. they did <laughs> yeah, it. That's a good point. I well, still, they had no choice, but yeah. We said this last time, I still haven't seen World Trade Center or United 93. Yeah. Because it, 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 it feels weird to me, just weird yeah. to see those films because I was yeah. alive 16, 15 years ago. You know yeah. what I mean? It's weird. And I think, uh, I think for... Honestly, for a lot of people, it's very different. For me, I think it's I think it's ill timed. I don't think that the that the right time to do this movie is right now. But I am interested in seeing it because I remember sitting there in front of the television all day, all night when this happened, yeah. mm -hmm. absorbing all the different news stations mm -hmm. about the the hunt for these two brothers who set up this and all, just like all these different things. So yeah, yes, it is poor timing for this, especially because of everything that's happened in the last mm -hmm. week, week and a half, mm -hmm. two weeks. Horrible timing. Um, it couldn't be any worse. But yeah. at this point, like they 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 can't pull the plug and delete this yeah, movie. It's too they late can't now. wait four years. They can't wait mm -hmm. potentially uh, eight years. You know what? Spider Man like delayed the film after the Twin Towers got you know got attacked. Well, they didn't delay the movie. All they, they did. did was went in they and they, they removed. They delayed the, towers. the film significantly. Did, they, did it have an earlier release date? It had an earlier release date. Oh, wow. I don't know, I don't know if can it you did. Fact it, check you know what, Lucas? Yeah, actually, you fact check that, Lucas? I, uh, well, I seem to remember. I think you might be right. They, 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 I think they, they, I, know they pulled the, I know they pulled the trailer. 2001. Yeah. And it may have been pushed back to 2002. Maybe. maybe by a few I think, months. I think Erica might be right on that. But, it, it, but at whatever point they were writing the script, it may have been during 9-11. Mm -hmm. sure. The third act was taking place in the World Trade Center, and they changed it after. Mm -hmm. But that's crazy because it happened in September, and then the film came out in 2002. In May. In May. Yeah. Like, that's it was delayed, It was delayed time. a couple of months, not years. Wow. But again, like, putting a whole movie of that budget on hold yeah. for any yeah. amount of time like that would cost it's, a lot yeah, of money. Cost, it does cost money. Uh, I think they pull the trigger too much on this movie now. Yeah, they're too deep into it. They have to, they already, have to do yeah. it. If anything, the cheapest option is to re-edit it. Right. Make it a little bit I, different. I think the only thing that we can hope for is that it touches it, whatever. I mean, all, all, er, all the whole thing is a touchy subject, but yeah. whatever, like little intimate things that are very much kind of extremely intimate and very like, I think they're gonna hopefully take a lot of care with creating and building those scenes. Yeah. But it's it's tough. <laughs> it's it so seems tough. like we're all not what? feeling good about it. That, <laughs> just that one scene, you guys. Like the rest of the film, well, yeah. I was like on board with. And I mean, that I think that seems like, like really? it's a pivotal scene too. Yeah. I think the whole thing is going to be an emotional roller coaster. So Absolutely. if you're not prepared yeah. for that, I, I, and I think in clear. general, even without that scene, I think I still think it's too soon. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, but I mean, yeah, I don't. I just they're not. They're not. There's. They're not going to delay the movie for four years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's right. just no. They're not going to. That's just yeah. the reality. The movie's it, coming out and it's coming out. That's, yeah, exactly. Like United ninety three. I went and I saw it in theaters. Yeah. And it was it was very close to when nine eleven happened. Yeah. And it brought it it brought out a lot of emotions from a lot of yeah. people in the audience who were watching that movie. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing to be reminded that soon of what happened, but I know that for people, maybe because of how soon it happened and how soon that movie came out after that. There, there was still a connection that was really mm -hmm. strong. Yeah. 
but it's, it's who so knows hard. guys so you know hard. we may live in a bubble the four or five of us here yeah and the way that the presidential election just went maybe this movie's gonna make a fuck ton of money oh absolutely <laughs> no it's like, absolutely I don't, honestly, I don't even know I don't anymore I don't know America anymore yeah. guys we don't yeah let's uh Ooh. change gears and let's go on to the next movie right. uh, oh okay next, great uh, Eric have you seen this trailer yet I haven't okay interesting okay. let's do this let's I do haven't this. either go for it I haven't either Get tickets already? Does this come out like in a year? This is Major. I'm on site. I'm going in. You are the first of your kind, but you're not invulnerable. Maybe next time you can design me better. Everyone around me, they feel connected to something. Connected to something I'm not. What are you? dying we saved you and now you save others first underwhelming <laughs> underwhelming you guys can have completely different opinions that's totally cool it's the second time i've seen the trailer the the, the things that struck that stuck out at me were that the firstly scarlett johansson making out with a woman feels like really just like titillating for titillating sake like i'm like what the fuck does this have to do with any mm -hmm, part of the movie mm -hmm. the second thing i have to mention this this was tweeted out and i think it's totally something that we should hit on for like ghost in the shell which is already dealing with controversy at least to people that have been following the film Everybody who dies in this trailer, Asian. Everybody who speaks in this trailer, white. So it's like, okay, guys, okay, guys, what are we doing? What are we, what, what's, what is this movie? The beginning, the fact that Scarlett Johansson, like, unrobed and she was kind of naked without nipples, just the way that the anime was, just the way that the, that the original film Scar uh, Ghost in the Shell was, I totally get it. But the fact that they're doing that, I'm like, oh, this is why they made this movie, is to show off, like, a naked, hot Scarlett Johansson, mm -hmm. have her make out with, like, a super hot, like, ethnically ambiguous chick, and then let's kill a bunch of Asian people in this movie. I don't know. It just, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> it, bang, didn't, bang, boom, it didn't done. seem like, so it's a trailer, I get it, and it's super short, but it didn't seem like this thought-provoking, interesting. It just seemed like we can do the cartoon but with live-action people and cool special effects, and that's a good enough reason to do it, and I didn't feel like it was a good enough reason to do it. There's nothing in this movie that touches or comes close to the anime. I, I, I started watching anime with that movie. Like really? That was my introduction it's a, to anime. It's a anime. pivotal anime film oh, for yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. It it just doesn't it doesn't come close like the, I could see the inspiration for it but it's it's not all there and this is ignoring the problem Erica yeah <laughs> I'm just talking visually yeah um, but even visually it's like this it, for me it's the same as like the Jungle Book or Beauty and the Beast I'm like what right, are you bringing right, to the right. table other mm -hmm. than just doing it in live action like yeah the anime was gorgeously animated I didn't right. love the film I didn't connect to the story and I right. know people who did but at least you can say that that anime film from 95 or whatever mm -hmm. was like visually groundbreaking. Which oh, absolutely. It was. What absolutely. is this? Do I feel like I have seen this stuff before. I have. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, you have In seen film. this stuff because it is literally a shot for shot remake and it looks yeah. beautiful and it's everything I really could have wanted visually from a, a Ghost in the Shell film. But you know what? It's, 
it's wrong. It's it's so problematic because they still use it's still in Tokyo. It's still very much using. You can't like use all this a you know Asian imagery right. and then like justify away and then do all sorts of mental gymnastics to justify having the lead character be white. It's I'm I'm sorry and like if you if you are defending it, please just stop for a second and and think about why you're so heavily defending it. Why would it bother you um, to give it to uh, an, an Asian actress? Talking about how there's no more movie stars anymore, I was mm-hmm. watching yeah. this trailer for the second time and I'm like, would it have made a difference if the lead character, uh, Major, what's the character's last name? Uh, uh, Makoto Kusanagi. Makoto Kusanagi, Major Kusanagi, if Major was played by an Asian actress, would it literally and, have made And like- also, like, the, the reason, you know, I mean, uh, people have talked about this, how, like, oh, you wouldn't have been able to get it made if they didn't have Scarlett Johansson attached. I, mm-hmm. I disagree, Bullshit. and, like, I, I think that it's not just a problem uh, within the studio system, but within... This the whole system that kind of enables this sort of behavior, mm-hmm. and it's it's really upsetting uh, to me to see yeah. all this beautiful. Kick and McGee says they probably wouldn't get funding, and it's like fine, but like then that's the problem with the studio heads who right. yeah. don't understand like that's because they, they don't understand because it, it isn't she isn't actually going to sell tickets to this film. Like the only reason if it's it's bad. Also, uh, another thing that I inc- that that is so disheartening to me is that uh, a lot of film reviewers mm. uh, that wrote uh, an articles about this did not mention how problematic it is and mm. how problematic the trailer is. Um, they and then another fact that may or may not be related is that the studio flew all of them out to Tokyo for a fancy event mm-hmm. um, to win so them they, over sure so so they gave him a free the trip to japan uh and then all of these complimentary articles came out about it how, how it just nails the visual style and how true it is to the anime um i don't i'm not insinuating anything those are just facts yeah white rabbit says uh ghost in the shell isn't set in japan but it's that it's very heavily about japan and where yeah. it was at mm-hmm. that time mm-hmm. i agree I, I didn't I don't know about the background of this film until somebody like Ryan Green at Geek and Sundry like explained to me like oh no 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 this this movie this film the original story was written in response to Japanese Japan's relationship yeah. with other countries we, like it's, the United it's States post World War, World War II. II exactly Pro- all post World War II all all they could do they they were demilitarized they felt very impotent the only thing that they had the edge in was technology mm. it was and they be they became the world leader of technology and this is where they saw their future um, somebody That's said Chappelle. somebody Japan said playstations uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somebody said uh, in in the chat, like I understand about the whitewashing, but don't you think that if you didn't have a white actress in it, people would just think it was a weird Japanese film? There's a lot of good cinema that comes out of Japan, and I mm-hmm. and I don't think that it would. I mean, you can have other white people in the film if it makes people feel more comfortable with that, right. but you right. have to examine why. And, we and, are so uncomfortable with the idea of Why Asian don't actress. we ask the question, hey, a movie like Avatar comes out by James Cameron, which ends which ends which ends up being the highest grossing film of all time. Does the rest of the world think it's a weird American film? We don't even ask that question. Mm-hmm. We don't even consider true. that sort yeah. of global perspective. Like mm-hmm. maybe movies aren't made just for the United States or just whatever state or county or city you live in. Like right. they're for people around the world and they make money around the world and the fact that places yeah. like China is now an, an emerging market and, and films will make more money there than they do here in the United right, States right. you would think that movie studios would like understand that and they say that they do and they add certain things and they do certain things but then something like this comes out and you're like uh, okay WBM all right. says uh, how do you feel about the director of the original anime saying he approves of the movie, movie and Scarlett Johansson I mean to him it's a big deal that this got made you know by a big he's American probably seen a little so money on the back end too yeah and so I mean like he's excited about that and, and also uh, a lot of you know I think some article went to Japan's version of 4chan and asked like oh how do you feel about a white actress playing a Japanese, uh, Japanese character and they were like this is great it's awesome because they're the Japanese version of 4chan and th- that was probably the wrong place to pull and, and but other... also it's a Japan is a, a, a homogenous society and they they are like the you know they they 
are a little racist to people who are not Japanese as well. There's a big problem with immigration and mm -hmm. xenophobia. In thank Japan. you for subscribing, Quinn420. Yeah, thank you so much for but subscribing. But even off of that, Erica, there was they interviewed a bunch of Japanese people on the street and asked about Scarlett Johansson. And again, regular Japanese people are like, mm -hmm. I think that's great. Scarlett Johansson's a great actor. This is cool. This is a big movie. Mm -hmm. Once they were explained the problem of within the United States, within actors that live in Hollywood, within the fact that that, that, that that actors of color get less roles. And once they were explained that problem, they were like, oh, they probably should have yeah, cast a Japanese they actor. Don't, they like, don't understand the racial understand politics the of America because to them, they are like they the dominant, yeah, they are the dominant race in society, Japanese. Do you think um, that, that the Japanese hmm. will look at this casting or look at this movie and be like, oh, it's a great honor for this character to be played by this actor without knowing actually yeah. how the industry works mm -hmm. here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes yeah. and no. I think some people that might be sa more savvy about what ha how Hollywood and right. its casting practices those, those work savvy people would are like, be disappointed. No. But people in right. Japan are like, oh, Scarlett Johansson, she's a big time actor. Right. This we is a big her. deal. Yeah. This is what exactly. an honor. This is great. That yeah, a Japanese yeah. story is now being looked at as, as by Hollywood right. as yeah. being mainstream. Sure. I don't know. Any, I don't know anything about Ghost in the Shell. I've never read it and or watched the watch anime. Some manga and then an anime. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Have you seen The Matrix? Uh, yeah, I've seen Then you're good. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Got kind it. Of. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, so I don't know. Yeah. I, I've never seen it. So the only judgment I can I can kind of go off of is what you guys are saying about how important it is to Japanese culture and kind well, of no, what it... But that's interesting. What did you think of the trailer just without any yeah, of the context? Without, uh, without, yeah. without any context, like I'm, I'm intrigued by the visual, mm -hmm. by the visuals of the movie. I think sure. visually it looks really good. It's an interesting premise, but it's also Rupert Sanders and I didn't like Snow White and the Huntsman. Snow White. Let's, let's, let's oh, not forget right. that. From the director of thing is, Snow yeah. White and the Huntsman. Yeah. Get out of so here. So visually, I think it looks yeah, great. I think yeah. the studio is definitely putting all their money on screen. But yeah. I just don't know about the director. I don't know if it's the right director. Yeah. For, I think them, our buddy Cameron was in the chat. Jurassic Alien. I don't know what Jurassic Alien was saying. Mm -hmm. Jurassic Alien was saying that visually it looks stunning. Yeah. I don't yeah. know what other comments Cameron was saying. And, and but that's what yeah. makes me so sad because like I would have loved to have had this be live action. Like I remember back in high school when I was like super into anime and I dreamed of the time when we'd have like live action anime films, but I didn't think it would be like this, you know? I, uh, never, I never thought that way because to me the animation was so unique and sure. so much a part of it that I'm like I don't ever I don't think I ever need to see these live action sure. because yeah. I mean the animation is just the the things that they did and the talent that it takes to make these animated robots you should see this stuff Adam like it's the pretty stuff cool. that they do with the robots and the technology and everything hand drawn just, uh, hand drawn yeah. thing. And, and it leaves you boggled because you're like people drew this yeah. mm -hmm. and it's it's perfect the way it is Berkey Bike said something I think it's Berkey Burke or Berkey Bike said that like we, they understand our point about saying that this film should be for international audiences and not just assume that an American actor is going to be sort of the norm right. but then is arguing that the reason this is a problem is because of American casting practices, and I think that those are two uh, related and 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 kind of separate things at the same time. It's confusing. It's not just a, a a black and white issue for me. The reason we're bringing up the fact that there's a white actor is because Hollywood has this assumption that that white actors are the norm. That Scarlett Johansson would be the norm as opposed to internationally. And this is a story in a film that and, a, and an idea that comes from Japan. So right there, right off the bat, I take issue with that. And the second thing is, is that if we bring up the fact that it should have been a Japanese actor, uh, the only reason we brought up the idea that it, it's an issue within Hollywood casting uh, uh, patterns is because people have pointed out, well, you can ask Japanese people and they're stoked about Scarlett Johansson. It's right. because you have to understand the context. Again, once, yeah. once people, international audiences around the world are explained the idea that actors of color have a much more difficult time landing these types of roles, most of the time they'll come around to like, yeah, and, then that should have just been yeah, like a and, Japanese actor. Well, actor's, then like, also too, and, and it's on the other end, watching it too, it's, it's, you don't have many uh, role models to look up to. Uh, there aren't many characters that you see who are Asian or Asian American. Mm -hmm. And so to have one more like sci-fi leading sci-fi character who's Asian would, would have been so huge for a generation coming up. You know what was up. weird was the fact that like at the beginning of the trailer, you had the geishas, but they were straight robots, yeah. which is the most dehumanizing. The way that the world and especially America thinks about Asian women in that they are uh, submissive and not to be, you know, don't speak unless you're spoken to. And then they just turn that into a robot character at the beginning of this trailer. 
that would all be fine if you're doing a weird robot, sexy, ghost in the shell thing. If like the lead actor was also a Japanese woman who was like a character of fully fleshed. So the fact that we're just seeing just Japanese robots that are blinking weird, whether or not you understand that yeah, shit and, ties and into how Americans think of, Jap- oh, of Japanese and Asian women. That and, stuff and ties into it. It's stuff you you might think like, oh, that's reaching a little bit, but it's all very subconscious stuff. And also when uh, I noticed people reacting to what Hector was saying about um, her kissing the woman and they're saying like, oh, cano- canonically she's bi. I, I can tell you that that's not what who they're trying to appeal to <laughs> with that in the trailer. Like, and we want more that. bi representation. No, 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 right, no, right, no, right. no, 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 no. Yeah. It's two attractive ladies kissing. It's, you know yeah. who that's going yeah, for. It's they're the appealing way it's to the, shot, the, right. to the, the dudes that are like, that's tight, dude. That's fucking the hot. The male dude. gaze. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. And like even yeah. even with her like removing her clothing in that way, it's not, it, it's, it's not for us. No, no. Oh, I hope it's good. <laughs> so I don't right, know. Adam? Like, Too much I mean, info. I, I mean, well, I if, if good, you're man. interested in this film, I would highly recommend checking out the manga or the anime Definitely. because it is really fascinating and and it's a lot to wrap your mind around and and you know I would I would encourage you. It's your life, but I would encourage you not to see this film to show Hollywood that we won't accept this kind of behavior. Oh 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 oh! oh cover for Thanks for subscribing. Thank what are, what are you looking at, Lucas? How many how many Luke, how many Lucas? How many Lucas how many Lucas's that? How many, how many Lucas's uh, that? Currently one Lucas ever. <laughs> <laughs> one, the only one that counts. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know. That's a that's a lot. But also that's a uh, lot. reminder that we're uh, six followers now away from giving away another Steam key. Dude. Hey. Six away from hey, I see some names in there that haven't been following. Yeah. If you're not come on, following, guys. <laughs> come on, guys. Girls, girls, oh, it's free. It's so free to follow. Much, it's free though. to follow. Just hit that follow button. Yeah. I'll go rent mm-hmm. on that trailer for the. You go, you go rent for on now. that trailer? For You're going to rent that trailer? I'm going to rent that trailer. This next trailer is nuts, y'all. I haven't seen this yet. Mm-hmm. This is a good time. Valerian and the City of Planets. Oh, oh, Planet oh, official trailer oh, teaser oh my God. Uh, home sweet home. Because the sky is blue, it makes me <laughs> Whoa! Okay. That well, was uh, the pedigree is there. This is the, holy shit. But I don't. I don't know. That one looked really exciting and interesting. Yeah. Uh, I hope that the CG holds up. Here's okay. A, here's a question for you because it's from the director of the Fifth Element, who th- the Fifth Element used a lot of practical suits and they were right. cheesy, but they right. were practical. But they were so right. cool. But they were so cool. This movie has it looks like what I loved is that shot of that practical suit, but then the CG was adding the blinking. Right. Yeah. I'm really really hoping that the blending of practical and CG is well used. But even if the CG is like cheesy, don't you guys feel like that's part of kind of the charm of even the Fifth Element? Is that yeah. you know sure. it's fake? I, it's like, I agree. Yeah. Like it still might work this within that sort of visual. Feels like a '90s. F- film oh, and totally. I really Absolutely. like that. So yeah. that's that's one thing that I wanted to hit on. But so this the it doesn't CG. like rely too much on it cuz what made the fifth element interesting was was mm-hmm. kind of like the world and the storytelling. Mm-hmm. And I think that's there. I th- judging from everything that looks so fully fleshed okay. out, I think that's All there. Right. Yeah. Now the CG it's interesting the way they're using this. So the CG looks like they could have gone fully like Avatar, everything photorealistic, everything, but they're not going fully photorealistic yeah. with all these characters. And I think that adds to your sort of cheesiness 
of it. They're doing it on purpose to sort of sell like you don't know if they could be puppets or if they're fully CG characters. Yeah. And it looks like they're kind of blending everything around the the fully CG characters to sort of fit that. Because yeah. I, I noticed that a lot of the aliens, they were very fantastical, like very non-practical. They were really cool designs and it fit like the humans. I feel like they maybe sort of changed the humans a little bit to fit in, into the CG environment. The humans seem very over the top. Right. You know, in their acting style and the things that they're wearing and the way that they relate to one another. Right. So, yeah. Adam, what do you think? <laughs> Have you seen this yet? No. <laughs> really? What do you think? Were you as blown away as I was? Right? I You're love the fifth element so shit. much. And just so you guys know some context, like the fifth element is apparently heavily based visually on uh, the comic book, the mm -hmm. French comic book that Luc Besson looked for to inspiration. And even that comic book artist was a concept artist on Fifth Element. Mm -hmm. That entire mm -hmm. ch parts of Fifth Element were changed to fit what the concept artist, who was the comic book artist for, uh, from France, was changing up and like doing mm -hmm. that. Like Luc Besson was like, oh, okay, now my lead character is going to be a taxi driver in a futuristic yeah. New York or whatever. So like, it's definitely tied in with Fifth Element. Keep going. I I love this trailer so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah right, I watched this right? trailer and I'm just like, this feels like the Fifth Element, which is one of Luke Besson's, yeah, in my yeah, opinion, yeah. one of his best films that he's done. Uh, some of the some of the things that he's worked on recently, obviously, have not hit with a lot of people. They're kind of been meh. Even a lot of stuff that he's produced, people are kind of not on board with it. But I'm I if this to me feels like what I, the I got the same feeling watching this trailer that I get when I watch The Fifth Element. Just a lot of fun, really cool sci-fi mm -hmm. that does feel very very nineties, where it's utilizing practical effects, CG effects to kind of blend this whole world together, and it looks like it's just trying to have a really fun adventure. Which I'm like, oh god, please be that good, right? Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. Yeah. it looks professional, like they, the professional. It looks is like amazing. they let him go to town on this yeah. movie. Like I... everything I want to do, just do it. Yeah. Oh. Biggest, yeah. biggest French budget for like a French film ever is is Valerian in the City of a Thousand Planets yeah. so far. So French? Um, have you guys been following any French animators or anything? No. Like that? Yes. Oh my God. So there's such good animation there's coming out of There's such good France. animation. There's this really cool short of Rocket, Rocket Raccoon and Groot. I think you guys might have seen it. Oh, I have seen it. Or we might be able to pull it up. Um... French animators did it, and the yeah. style looks so uh, fucking cool. Because they have the Goblins School, mm -hmm. which is like churning out, just churning out amazing animators. Mm -hmm. And every year, it's the same, the same guy that that did uh, Phantom Boy, um, who did a Cat in Paris. And there's just, there's just so much good animation coming out of France right yeah. now. Yeah, there's minor a lot glitch. Of minor underscore glitch says, I think we all need a good adventure right now, and I, I yeah. hope that's what that movie brings. <laughs> I really do hope yeah. that's what that I, movie I, brings. I, I hope that it's good. His the last one, Lucy was not very good. It didn't interest me. We're a little me. torn on that but, movie. Yeah. But uh, this this looks great. This looks like a good romp. Yeah, you're right. It feels like yeah. a nineties film. Yeah, it, yeah, it feels it feels really great, and I'm as blown away as you are. Yeah. Uh, yeah, April in the great. Extraordinary Dope. World is French. That shit was dope. All right. Final trailer. Claire, do don't it. start crying. <laughs> Claire has been crying all day. More like she's going to pop a boner. Yeah. <laughs> She'll probably say, like, true. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the Beast's castle this time? Oh, this music, though. Come on, guys. Shh. Let me hear the music. <laughs> let me feel it in my loins. That's a fake horse. You must leave here. This castle isn't alive. Who's there? Do you wish to take your father's place? Come into the light. Show me the girl. Look at her. What if she is the one? <gasps> the one who'll break the spell. Hello. You can talk. Well, of course he can talk. Hello, pleased to meet you. The master's not as terrible as he appears. I say we kill the beast! Yeah, Damn it. Is he one thing you've always wanted. I'll find it in your mind's eye and feel it in your heart. Don't be afraid. I'm not afraid. 
still not sold on the beast. Dude, he I'm feels not. very wooden. I got it. Feels- yeah. Okay, I love that music. That's gonna get me to cry every time. That being said, yeah, it's uh the the face is it's a little it's, uncanny yeah. valley. It's a very little uncanny, uncanny valley. valley. Yeah. Just, yeah. And the animation on him is very wooden, uh, like he's not uh, Yeah, I'm not, uh, sold. Also, I'm not sold. Also also it's just that dress. It's that dress. It should have been something huge and overwhelming. Oh. Yeah, I don't uh, care about that. Uh, yeah. because I'm stupid and I'm not fashionable. <laughs> yeah, at all. also I just also I, 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 why are they remaking all of these? You, you know, know what it reminded me of? I was hoping that it would remind me more of Cinderella by Kenneth Branagh, which I haven't seen yet, but seemed like a really good film. But instead, it reminded me of Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland, which was like all CG. Yeah. Like the tower yeah. that she's in is super like CG. Like the, the castle Beast is, is super CG. CG. The wolves are CG. Everything's fucking green screen. Yeah. The, 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 the clock and the and the candlestick, they don't look like an actual clock and candlestick come to life. They look like those CG creatures. I'm like, yeah. it all seems yeah. super CG, man. Yeah. Can, I be re- can I be real with you? Be real with me, man. I think I've seen Beauty and the Beast maybe once. Uh-huh. Yeah, That's it's fine. Been, it's been like over a decade for me. Sure. But... As this trailer was kind of progressing and going forward, yeah. I don't know why. I don't know if it was the music or the visuals. You, I got you a little better. emotional. Yeah, you did. It's the, I don't, music. It's the music, dude. Yeah. It's the music. It's, it's some because of the best I don't, music. And I don't Disney know that Disney bored well. its way into your brain, dude, and brainwash <laughs> yeah. yeah. you from when yeah. you were a baby. And I, and I do think, yeah, The Beast, I think, is still a work in progress. I mean, I think it comes out in, like, March or something. Dude, Rent, Netflix won. 29 to 26 wow. for yeah. theater. Wow. Whoa. Suck That's on that, Claire, 58. Man. Damn. So... It's in, yeah, like sure. I think I'm in that I think, boat. I'm in that boat. I don't think the beast looks bad. I think I think he looks right now. I think fine. he looks fine. Right. I think hopefully as we kind of progress and the movie gets closer and closer, we'll see little tweaks to him that make him little, look a little more realistic. Maybe it was the lighting. Maybe darken him up. Maybe darken sure. the whole now, thing. Up. His face is flat. The beast yeah. had a bit of a snap. <clears throat> but I but, yes, but I also do think that because it's Disney. I think maybe they want to just try to make the beast look a little more friendly. I get yeah. it. Possibly. I, I understand. Yeah. I mean, because animated animated's different. The, the problem animated, is with the animation, kind of yeah. Friendly. It's just so iconic and wonderful. Right, and if you right. look at some of the art books, um, you see all the initial sketches of the, of the concept art of they try to do yeah. the beast. And it's like they, they at one time had like a gibbon. And, mm-hmm. and yeah. just they, he looks so vastly different. And one of them even kind of looks similar to this guy. But... I don't know. know. Part of the reason, so I watched a lot of Glenn King. Do you guys know who Glenn King is? Mm -hmm. The animator. So this guy, master animator, he did some of the most beautiful animation he's done in his career on this movie. And he was part of the character design for for the Beast specifically. And he said that part of, they were having a lot of trouble with the Beast until they gave him a snout to make him a little bit more like a Mm -hmm. dog. So you can relate to him a little bit more. So he had more of a wolfish, dogish type of type of personality and he said that as soon as they added that there you go boom yeah. you got your your beast who you feel comfortable even though he is a beast you still can look him in the face right. yeah this beast i look at his face i'm like what's wrong with your face you know what's a bummer whoever animated or designed the beast in this film didn't watch that little special behind the scenes thing that Probably you watched not. dude it's like that was Probably key not. that shit is yeah. key there's a reason yeah. that those character designs are so effective yeah don't Probably ignore not. it embrace it yeah <laughs> Yeah. I, and and also, so, I I just what what are they adding to it? I exactly. It seems like it's, it, it seems like it's a scene a by scene film. recreation yeah. of it. It's like, dude, you guys, Jungle Book 3D Blu-ray came out today, and I did not buy it. Sorry, John Favreau. Like, I love the original Jungle Book. I don't need your your movie. It I didn't thought you were you were a huge proponent were, of the film. Fan. I thought it looked gorgeous. Like Visually, so best special effects I've seen since Life of Pi. Didn't add anything. Jungle Book didn't yeah. add anything. So Disney, you got to convince me that your shit's I, adding something. Yeah, I I watched this. The, honestly, the most memorable and best thing about Cinderella was the dress. Yeah. Again, like, and you'll still see it at conventions, but nobody really talks about how good a yep. movie it was. Yeah. <laughs> Ginger Peony says, I feel like they're trying to let that guy from Downtown Abbey's performance come out more by trying to let the face be more human. Yeah. Rare. Yeah. But I don't care yeah. about the guy from Downtown Abbey. Yeah, I, I don't care, care about, about the Beast. beast. It's, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> beast is puts butts in seats. Mm-hmm. Beast in seats. Beast, yeah. beast, beast in butts in seats. Hashtag yeah. Beast in seats. Oh, beast yeah. butts in yeah. seats. Yeah. All right, guys, so let's talk about what's coming out on Blu ray. We've got Ooh. a few. Oh. Hector, Hector got quite a few oh, of these. Oh, I got him today. Oh. Hector, can I just say it real quick that your DC All Access video. Talk oh. about talking about Young Justice. Oh, they bring it back. Oh, oh. It's, like a oh. Yeah. it's it's a the good best. Boom. First up, Finding Dory, dudes. Got it on 3D Blu-ray right there. Uh, Finding great. Dory gets a little zany, but it is so good. So yeah. I, it's a good movie. Yeah. So good. And you bought a companion piece to that. I did. I got Finding Nemo 3D Blu-ray because I didn't have it, y'all. 
So now I got both of them. I got both yeah. the findings. The, All the findings. So, finding, so you found them. I found yeah. both the findings. And then, of course, I got this bad boy because I've been waiting to buy this since because it didn't release it on 3D Blu-ray yet, but Star Mine's Wars The Force home. Awakens. Four disc set. What does it even come with? If we've got, well, the, most important, bonus the footage. most important thing that it has is an audio commentary mm -hmm. with J.J. Abrams, of the whole is what film? I'm looking forward to. Wow. Yeah. wow. yeah, that's the first bonus feature that's yep. listed. We've got a, a Blu-ray 3D, a regular Blu-ray, a DVD, and digital HD. I imagine that one I'm gonna of I'm going to watch the, that little shit tonight. Hey, the I might actually buy just, that because yeah. I have a feeling the bonus footage on that is going to be phenomenal. Yeah, There's a yeah. bunch of great stuff on the That's back. That's why I buy so that. So also coming out is the collector's edition of the Jungle Book in 3D, which maybe maybe I'll buy. Maybe. Uh, the 3D was I have good. the regular. I have the regular Blu-ray, but maybe I'll get this one. And then a 20th anniversary of Space Jam. Which else you get? I bought straight out of Compton on Blu-ray. Nice. But importantly. The un it's the unrated. Un oh, unrated, of course. Uncut. And I also got the Conan, the collection, one yes. and two. Conan the Barbarian and Conan the Destroyer in one little Blu-ray set. That's probably totally the best investment it. you've ever made. Totally it goes. is so good. So good. Yeah. It is what is best in life. Yeah, <laughs> these Conan films. Love it. And then coming out Love theaters, it. there's a whole range of movies coming Oof. out. We didn't get to talk about what was coming out last week. Arrival is out. If you have not seen Arrival, go watch Arrival. We'll that movie's it. really, really good. I'm going to go watch it again. Mm -hmm. uh, Fantastic mm -hmm. Beast, which right now... I think still is it still eighty nine eighty nine percent. We'll see. For the longest time, it had a hundred percent rating. Beasts is okay. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. 89%. All right. I I you know obviously as the huge Potterphile uh, was uh, been super looking forward to this movie, but also a little a little cautious because uh, J K has been kind of pulling a George Lucas on us in a lot of respects. Like and how uh, so? Well, she's all of a sudden racist. <laughs> It's not that Federation? Straight the Federation. I mean, have you read the about the American uh, hog version of Hogwarts though? No, no. what is that? Oh, no. uh Did she write it? Called. Yeah, so this is stuff that's on Pottermore and it's like basically how Wait, is there the a American McDonald's school? inside the the, <laughs> po the Pottermore? No. A McDonald's and a Starbucks. Yeah, but it's Starbucks? like kind of weird about Native American culture and mm. like Ilvermorny. Yeah. And basically how there wasn't like a school and any sort of codified magic until all, all of the white settlers came in. And uh, it's it's just not, it's, sure. you know, and I'm... I'm mm, that doesn't surprise me because... It's all, problematic of, just of because all she doesn't know. Eight you know? Harry Potter films with its dozens and dozens of cast, there's like one Asian person and one black guy. Yeah. And that's, yeah. and you know, I'm like, Because they're okay, feeling quotas, there's a couple, Hector. But and, then, quotas. and then that's another thing is that like, at least in the trailers... Uh, that's not. It's a pretty white New York for Fantastic mm -hmm, Beasts, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and and then for the also 30s. if you read if you read, I know she only did the story and didn't write the whole thing, but Cursed Child was not good. Oh right. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't read that. It I, yeah, wasn't. I couldn't speak to that, but sure, yeah. sure, sure. All right. Okay. I've been hearing a lot about this movie, Edge of Seventeen. They've been promoting you know, this one a lot. I've, yeah. I've been getting a lot of screening invites to it, and I honestly skipped because I thought like, is this going to be another movie about like? A young teenager right. coming of life story. Like not, I don't want another one of those. You're not the demographic. But then I saw then I saw the ratings in the review. It's like yeah. in the high nineties. It's like a 90, ninety. I see ninety one. Ninety one. Like yeah. that's great. And yeah. like I like Haley Steinfeld. I, she was in um, the movie Jeff oh, Bridges, yeah. True Grit. True she was Grit. good. Uh, yeah. It's also got Woody Harrelson in it and Kira Sedwick, and I think they're both great actors. So. Now that I know that kind of like the reviews, they're all mostly positive. Like okay. I'm willing to give this movie a chance. Yeah, me too. Um, also, come on, Manchester by the Sea. I think it's I think it's Rent. a limited re release. Rent. Yeah, um, that's not here on Rotten Tomatoes right now. Uh, it's also got I think it's got a 94 percent rating. Probably Nocturnal really good. Nocturnal Animals, which I know a few Rent. people who saw that and they said it was probably one of the best movies of the year what? out of a list of like maybe 10. Uh, JT 75% saw it. He really, he really on liked Rotten Tomatoes. It. He thought it was really, really good. Okay. And then Bleed for This, he, he was... Pass. Yeah, Bleed for This, Fuck he, that guy. he thought was like, meh. Jesus. He thought it was okay. He wasn't that impressed with it. 71 on that, Rotten Tomatoes. Who's in that movie? Miles Teller? Fuck that guy. Miles Teller. No Not reason. a fan of the teller? He's big no pimping. Reason. He's big pimping on that cover, Hector. Yeah. <laughs> you see that? Uh, he said, uh, JT saw and he said it was more in the lines of um, Southpaw than it was The Creed. Fighter. Or yeah. Creed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, so... I don't know. I think for me, I'm gonna try to go try to go out and see Fantastic Beasts, Nocturnal Animals. I'll even go check out maybe Edge of Seventeen and Manchester by the Sea. <sighs> it's but gonna be a long you weekend. Get, for you me. need to get one of those movie passes. I should. Yeah. Really I should just get one. one. It's forty bucks a month. Yeah. It's probably like the best investment I can make. Probably. Nikki Hama says, just go watch Creed instead of, instead of Bleed, bleed for this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I have it on Blu-ray. I'll watch it this weekend. Or, or go watch <laughs> The Fighter. 
Both are really, really Mobius good. Mobius says, I have been hearing his farts don't stink. I don't Miles know who you're talking about. <laughs> Miles, Miles, Miles Teller's Teller, farts don't stink. Uh, but that's must be bullshit. The fact. No, no, no. He's, he's Mr. Mr. Fantastic. Yeah, he's, he's Mr. Fantastic. Yeah. He, can't, he can't be Lot Varian. He's like yeah. literally the opposite his of Lot Varian. His poopoes stink yeah. just a little bit. He's but he was, he was he friends get. with Lot Varian. Yeah, yeah right? he was for a little They're bit. They're his favorite people. Oh. He was friends with the king of Lot of Lat I bet you Miles Teller's fart stinks so bad. You've been sitting here. He looks like a guy who's farts. You've been sitting here trying to open the eye of Agamotto for the last like 30 minutes. Oh shit, it's open. Whoa! Whoa! So me and Pooch went to go see it on Sunday, and during the whole movie, I was going like this. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking just, about Dr. Strange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I got, I got Should it. we do I six minutes it. of spoilers? Let's do six minutes yeah. of spoilers. Oh, yeah, that's Let's right. Let's do that. I'll, do pull that. Up a, I'll pull up a. My phone's about to die, dude. You might want to help me out. Thank you. Pull up a little stopwatch. Get that going. Six minutes of spoilers start now. I thought it was good. Not the best Marvel movie. I like parts of it. I uh, like uh, the score was disappointing, but then I heard the score afterwards by itself. Michael Cicchino killed it. I thought he did a great job. I'm looking forward to Spider-Man Homecoming score. I thought Benedict Cumberbatch was great. I thought Rachel McAdams was underused, but she was great in the in the in what she was done. And uh, I love the ending so goddamn much. Agamotto, I've come to bargain. Uh, no, uh, Dormammu. 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 He is that memorable of the villain. Three beers. Okay, Three beers. so I enjoyed come to so much of the visual style. I enjoyed that the last battle was so vastly different than a giant knockdown drag out like the rest of the Marvel films are. Yeah. Here are my problems with it. It is a, a inherently problematic property it's just not gonna be not racist in one way or another uh and just because i mean the doctor i'm, I'm tired of, of the trope of of the white guy who's uh very unlikable i really didn't like uh dr strange at all oh. like and i don't feel like he really learned anything at the end of it either uh he he seemed Pretty irredeemable for the most part. Uh, going to, he's like, I, I, when Western medicine failed me, I turned to the East, and it's just such a tired trope. Um, it's not place some place to discover yourself. Um, also, they had the the perpetual Marvel girlfriend problem, uh, and Benedict Cumberbatch. I love him. He is one of my favorite actors, but his American accent was not good. It was not. I liked it. Oh, it's so noticeable. He overpronounced everything mm -hmm. and kind of just, if it was kind of wooden because of it. Um, I liked it. Okay. <laughs> I like Dr. Right. Strange, and I think right. it did change because Stephen Strange would not wear a broken watch when he was a doctor. And at the very end of that movie, oh, fuck. he throws that, on that broken that's watch. True. I forgot about that. Yeah, I, I thought that there was a good enough character development for him. But, but what was interesting was my takeaway was even at the end of the film, um, that I was like, he's not the Sorcerer Supreme. He's not full-on Doctor Strange right, yet. Right. And then I left the movie and then saw somewhere online that the director said that too. He's like, yeah, he's not full-on Doctor Strange yeah. like Sorcerer Supreme yet. The guy, his mentor, Tilda Swinton, the Ancient One, died. Mm -hmm. He's got Wong. There is no Sorcerer of, Supreme. There's no Sorcerer Supreme. Even, even Wong, yeah, even Wong's like, well, we're going to get attacked now. And he's like, yeah. well, we'll figure it out. So so I, I thought that, that his character development, the, for me, the, the, the strengths of the film was that they focused on Stephen Strange and the Ancient One. I thought Tilda Swinton did a fantastic yeah, job. Yeah. I really, really liked her spoiler alert death scene i thought it was beautiful <laughs> uh but yeah. other characters were underserviced i wanted more wong i uh -huh. wanted more yeah, they made it such a huge Mordo. deal about wong they're like oh he's not gonna be a man servant sure. anymore Which he's gonna he be like a, like an equal like, and stuff but, but he's like, just this let's like see in more of him you know what i mean <laughs> like that was my, yeah. my 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 thing too was that i was more excited about a sequel to the film than the actual sequel itself. I think Iron Man 1 is still the best Iron Man film, but I think that Doctor Strange 2 could be the best Doctor Strange. Like, I think a movie could easily do better than yeah. what they set up in the right, film. I, I feel Dearest Nye said, said he one. didn't have a good character arc. Hmm. I thought the movie was fine. I think, uh, like Hector was saying, it's not my favorite Marvel movie. I think it did a, a decent job of kind of giving this character an arc. I think that they probably could have hit a little bit harder. They could have given him sure. a little bit. I think he. I think the character could have went from one direction to the other a little bit stronger. I think they could have just hit everything stronger. Rachel McAdams, I think, was an underused character. I would like to see her come back. They should have just put Night Nurse in the fucking movie because why not? Mm -hmm. uh, to con Temple? to, to yeah, connect it to the saying. damn movie. Oh, there was no great. difference between putting Rachel McAdams yeah. or just putting Claire Temple into the movie. It would have just tied the whole universe together a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I think visually it's an incredible movie. It does so many things that I've never seen in a movie before. Oh, the astral fight, yeah, so good. and it just pushes it pushes the visual boundaries out a little bit more. And I hope that Marvel uses that to their advantage for future films. 
the score a little bit underwhelming, but again, it's one of those things where as I'm watching the movie, you don't someone mentioned it. someone mentioned in the comments. I didn't notice it only when it sounded like Star Trek, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then I noticed yeah. it more. But then I went and I sat down and I watched the score and I thought it sounded great. I can't wait to hear what Michael Giacchino does with Spider-Man: Homecoming. Overall, mm -hmm. I think the movie was 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 good. I was blown away though. But I think right. it was a really good movie. Mm -hmm. The things I was blown away with were like the visual, the, stuff. the visual stuff, the fact that they're like there's a multiverse, the fact yeah. that like the, the the use of some of the 3D was really really stellar. I love that shit. Well, that I love stuff that was there was a visually distinctive style from a lot yes. of the other Marvel films, yeah. and, and it was appropriate because it was magic. It's and visually it's just, unique. Yeah, That's because a lot of the Marvel universe looks kind of samey, you know, just, right? Just because they have to standardize it, and, but to, to diverge from that was very gutsy of them, and I really liked mm. that. And one of the most exciting things was that at the end, it's like you get the scene with him and Thor. I'm like, that's the Doctor Strange I give a shit about. Mm -hmm. His solo stories are great, but the, when he interacts with the rest of the Marvel Universe, that's what yeah. I want to see. Also, also the costumes were so gorgeous. Oh, I yeah. loved really those. Good. I think production design and costume design, yes. all that stuff looked really great. To me, one of the things that I thought that this movie didn't do so well was hit the comedy. Yeah. I think there oh, are moments. So earned, I thought the comedy in certain earned. moments was great. I think Tilda Swinton probably was the best at the comedy. Did you see um, that in a gift shop? Best line, best yeah. right, line and and I think this thing like, uh, you know, it's the Wi-Fi password. We're not, we're not, we're not savages. We're not savages. And I'm all like, right. all right, whatever. Yeah, and then and then when Ben to Cumberbatch talking to talking to Wong, like, you Wong, know, are you Beyonce? Yeah, Beyonce, Beyonce. 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 I'm just like, all right, we've run this joke too yeah. long. <laughs> uh, oh. Lady Kaku, the cape, uh, the cape. That yeah. was my big uh, yeah, issue. The cape. But then was, people also yeah, love the cape. Like the cape. Oh, people in the chat the were like, I love like the cape. They're like, the, best Marvel side. I, I, no, I, I did. I, I, did I, like I like the cape, the, cape the best. Um, <laughs> Mads Mikkelsen. We didn't even mention him because he was so forgettable. I and they did the thing again where they had like the the villain that had the that, that had the arc mirroring the hero, and that's sure. not compelling to me anymore. I disagreed. I thought that he was fantastic, but I was, he I, was am great, I am but disappointed that he he was killed at the end and right. underserved. Well, we don't sure. know if he's dead yet. But he I just thought he joined had a great Dormammu. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't know. Yeah, yeah we don't I, know. I like I really like Mads Mikkelsen. Ever since he played Le Chiffre in Casino Royale, I've want to see this guy <sighs> so get great. more roles like yeah, this. Three, uh, two, no, no, I think he could have been he pretty good. Great. One. That's well, it. You know. Six minutes spoilers done. Nice. But the nice. glitter eyes. But the glitter eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was really interesting. Yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, yeah. yeah, that's our show. That's going to wrap it up for us. Next week, uh, I'm, I've am i got quite a few movies that I'm seeing this week, so hopefully I can come back with some. I'm definitely going to see Fantastic Beasts because we already have tickets yeah. to that. Yeah, we do? I don't no, know. Well, me and Cynthia. Oh, uh, okay. I was like, I don't uh, know. I bought a bunch of crap I got to watch. <laughs> <laughs> they will not be relevant to any part of the show. <laughs> no. Uh, make sure you guys are following Cineverse at Cineverse Show on Twitter. We're we we're engaging with you guys as much as we can on social media, even on our own social media channels. We yeah. want to continue the conversation. If you subscribe to Hyper RPG here on Twitch, oh, oh. oh. can we watch the Full Metal? Can Alchemist? we watch the Full Metal Alchemist live action trailer before you go, please? Hashtag for chat. For chat. Let's sure. do it. Okay. Thank you. Yes. 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 Thank Full you Metal so much Alchemist for your is tip. a movie? Uh, what? Yes. Okay. So it's a Japanese film. It's going to oh, be a okay. Japanese film. Uh, and it's like set in nebulous sort of Europe, but it's with all Japanese actors and stuff. So it's okay. like. down. Let's that's do it. That's great. Let's watch it. <laughs> well, that's a change. Full Metal alchem Alchemist. Yes. You got it. Nicely done, Adam. Trailer, Good typing. Trailer. You wanna, you're yeah. going to want to say trailer. This week. Still doesn't narrow it down. Oh, it? there it is, right, right there. Trailer, By the right couch. There. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Okay. I've never seen Full Metal Alchemist. This is gonna be awesome. It's just oh, a, I've wait, seen like it's three a teaser. episodes. It's a teaser, I think. Is it only thirty seconds? Uh, yeah, I think so. All right. Oh, that armor looks great. That uh, looks great. Oh, that looks pretty cool. Oh, wow. wow. A teaser made for fans of Full Metal Alchemist. I I don't hate it. I think it uh I yeah. think fans obviously are going to yeah, pick yeah, stuff yeah. up. It is really cool and it, it looks like what I remember the anime at least the covers of the DVDs and shit right, to look like. Right, right. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Cool, man. I'm so down. the premise, Adam, is this guy is studying, he's studying alchemy, which you turn things into other things that, aren't, that don't naturally do that. Uh, and his brother is caught in that suit of armor. His little brother is caught oh, in that sad. suit of armor. Yeah. Oh, like, wow. If so he's, he's not his inside spirit, it, he, it's, it's like it's his him. spirit yeah. it is him. Yeah. Wow. So it's, it's like so his brother is full metal. Yeah. yeah. And he's an alchemist. Yeah. 
figured it out. Interesting. Boom, done. Yeah. Full metal al- actor. You are so smart. <laughs> Got it. You yeah. are. You put the two and two together, baby. Don't ask me to explain the, the, the title of For Ghost in the Shell. I still don't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, yes, make sure you, you guys do. make sure you guys are following Hyper RPG on Twitch and obviously on Twitter. Uh, make sure you guys are subscribe. Because and it, followed and everything. Yes, yes. Because it obviously every every single subscription, every single donation that you guys give us helps us keep this channel going. Mm-hmm. Without you guys, we wouldn't be able to move into a new studio. It would be absolutely impossible. So thank you guys so much. Thank you for all the love. Make sure you guys are following Cineverse Show on Twitter using the hashtag Cineverse. Continue the conversation. And also, if you are subscribed, you get access to Discord where we can continue going. Continue the conversation there as well. Right. So, mm-hmm. thank you guys so much. Red Hop says, "Need more white people?" Nope, because literally, watch any other movie trailer. <laughs> yeah. and you're set. Let Asian people have one. All right, that's the message. <laughs> All right, guys, we will see you next week. Bye, Bye, everybody. Thank you so so much. All right, y'all. Zach is going to be playing Paragon with the community. Ooh. If you're not familiar with Paragon, uh, it's a MOBA. So a lot of people can play. I think that's what that stands for, MOBA. Uh, he's going to be playing the new playable character, so stick around for that later. <laughs>